everyone, welcome back to another stream! Uh, I know for those of you guys that uh, are watching live, I'm starting kind of early in terms of the whole starting soon thing. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be playing some Ninja Gaiden games tonight. Uh, this is going to be a variety stream, and uh, we're actually playing these games on the Mr. FPGA, which I've done plenty of streams on. Uh, but this allows me to jump from platform to platform and cover some platforms that I might not normally be able to, like the Atari Lynx! Yes, I am going to try to play some of the Atari Lynx versions of Ninja Gaiden, and uh, so that should be a lot of fun. I do like those versions. Uh, we're going to start off with Ninja Gaiden 3 for NES, just because I do want to play Ninja Gaiden 3 in the Lynx, and I want that to be a little bit farther into the stream and not like back-to-back -back with NES Gaiden 3. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start off with the last game on the NES, and, um, then just kind of go from there, so. Um, but yeah, welcome everybody to the stream, I see Michael already, uh, Carl, I see Red, Steve-O, and Kenshiro. Uh, Kenshiro says, first time I've ever seen a live stream of this channel, well welcome. And Ryan's back, wow. <laughs> Ryan says, some aggravating memories coming back. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden 3 is uh, notoriously difficult, especially the North American version. They did make it more challenging for the uh, North American release. Uh, you know, some of the gameplay mechanics were tweaked slightly. Uh, some power-ups that were kind of broken are available less often in the American version, like the uh, Fire Shield. And uh, you also get limited continues in this, so if you're the kind of person that doesn't learn from your mistakes easily or too well, um, you know, you're gonna end up getting kicked all the way back to the very beginning of the game, and that's just, yeah, how this is, so. But let's go ahead and just jump right into this and just get on with it. I'm gonna be skipping through, like, all the cutscenes and stuff like that. I do wanna try to play as many games tonight as I can. Uh, that's gonna involve me trying to, you know, get through these games relatively quickly. Uh, now, one thing I did want to uh, preface is I am most likely not going to be playing the Sega Game Gear version of Ninja Gaiden uh, simply because um, I covered it last week on my Game Gear variety stream. So if anybody wants to see that, go check out my Game Gear variety stream. It's one of the only Game Gear streams I've done on this channel. Uh, more to come, hopefully, because Game Gear is a pretty cool system. I grew up with it, and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun last week with that stream. Although, there was some salt involved. Uh, some of those games are really, really difficult. Or, or they have, like, a weird difficulty curve where, like, they're easy for four levels, and then the fifth and final stage is, like, impossible. <laughs> it's just, like, no in-between. Alright, boss number one. So, if you've never played Ninja Gaiden before, it's basically just, uh, run, jump, and attack. And, uh, up and attack will allow you to use your Nimpo. And so I have this weapon right now that actually shoots, like, diagonally downwards, and it's very good. Actually, it was, uh, it originated in Ninja Gaiden 2. Oh no, no cutscenes? Oh well. Well, I mean, the cutscenes in these games, especially Ninja Gaiden 3, the cutscenes aren't very good, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's definitely the kind of series where, like, uh, this, the whole cinematic aspect just sort of went downhill as they progressed. Um, well, I mean, Ninja Gaiden 2s can be decent, but I think the story was kind of cheesy in, in, uh, Gaiden 2. That's just a personal thing. Um, Gaiden 1, I felt, was, like, the, the most balanced of all the, uh, Gaiden games, early Gaiden games with cutscenes. Gaiden 3 has just had, like, just a dumb story, and it wasn't interesting to watch. So, skipping through the story in this is, like, no big deal. <laughs> but also, it's just, like, it, so the story is, like, it, it, it's for a lot of these games the story is like longer than like all the gameplay combined It's kind of ridiculous actually or at least it feels that way. I don't know if it actually is it always feels that way uh, Like I can get through the ninja, first ninja Gaiden in like 15 minutes But if I play all the cutscenes out, it's like a 30 plus minute playthrough or at least it, it seems like that so but Yeah, if we're gonna play a lot of games tonight without you know taking nine hours because I'd like to not take nine hours um, we're going to skip all those cutscenes. Tom says he's got his- he got his notification late on this one. Uh, well, I literally just went live, Tom. 
like five minutes ago. No joke. <laughs> I haven't even been recording for a full five minutes yet, so uh, your notification might have actually come right on time. So we actually just got a scroll. What that does is that boosts your maximum Ninpo allotment. So right now I can have up to 50 nin uh, Ninpo. That's an extra life right there. You do have limited lives in this game, and again, you've got uh, limited continues in the North American version. In the Japanese one, I think it's infinite continues. And uh, I don't really want that throwing star. I'm just going to skip it. But I've got another uh, fire wheel. It goes upwards. Very, very good. It's very good to know what your sub-weapons actually do in this game, and all the guiding games. Just wait for that guy to move over. Ninja Gaiden has a lot of, like, slow-moving enemies, and it just kind of requires you to just be patient as you play. Now, Ninja Gaiden 3, uh, there's a power-up that extends the size and length of your sword, and so that's what I've got. That was, like, one of Ninja Gaiden 3's, uh, like, new additions. Carl says, nine hours is fine. Well, maybe for you guys. <laughs> I'm finding that my nine-hour streams, like, have diminishing returns pretty quickly into the stream. And I get really tired during them, too. Although tonight might be different, because I woke up really late, and then I also started my stream really late. Uh, so, you know, that might have a uh, effect as well. Let's see if I can get this. Another thing uh, in Ninja Gaiden 3 is your knockback's not nearly as bad as it is in the previous two games. So, I was, if I got hit on that tiny platform in an earlier Ninja Gaiden game, I totally would have died. There's, there would have been no chance for survival. So, and you also have some slight mid-air control in this one, too, which is interesting. Oh! Spoke too soon. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden 3 is the one that gives, uh, you know, most people I talk to, it gives them the most trouble. Um, but it's, honestly, it's, it's not that bad, as long as you, like, you take your time, you inch your way across. There's some parts where it's good to just sort of inch the screen forward so you can make an enemy appear, which will make, like, a jump much easier. Just gotta wait for this platform, I'm gonna go ahead and just use that power-up. I always like to get that extra life, but really it's not that important. So you're probably better off just using uh, your sub-weapon instead of risking the extra life. Plenty of extra life opportunities in this game. There, there's a bunch of them over the course of the game. So if you're trying to like get a one credit clear or something like that, you've got plenty of opportunities for extra lives. A lot of these enemies I'll just skip. Just skip them. And one cool thing about this game, and it's actually, uh, Ninja Gaiden 2 did this as well, but you've got, like, water physics that, you know, depending on the way that the water's flowing, it'll actually, um, uh, you know, boost your momentum, which is always cool. Alright, so this is the fire shield I was talking about. It actually makes you invincible, even through, like, spikes. It's really interesting. And in the Japanese version, they give it to you a lot. Like, so much that you can just cheese a lot of the game. Alright, we want that scroll. Again, that's gonna boost our Ninpo, so we're at the, a maximum of 60 now. Let's actually go ahead and grab this, uh, fire. Alright, just wait. Oh! He wasn't gonna fire, okay. Those little ball things that stick in the ground, they, they shoot out these two, like, fire projectiles to the left and right. So what I want to do is actually come down here, and this is where it's good to sort of inch the screen over slowly. Right, one of these guys right here. There's a lot of these guys in this game. They can be very frustrating. You kind of have to memorize where they come from, otherwise you are going to get hit by them, and you are going to die. There is absolutely memorization in this game. Alright, so you want to go for the guy on the right. Alright, I'm going to jump over here, fall down. Ooh, still took a hit. That's fine. Come back over this way. 
I, I really like the bosses in this game. There's a lot of dodging and stuff like that you have to do. And hey, Colin, thank you very much for that. Michael asks, I might get Castlevania Lords of Shadow 1 and 2 for Xbox. Have you ever played those games? I have. Oh, man. I see Lawrence is out there now. Welcome back, Lawrence. Yeah, and Colin, thanks uh, thanks a lot for that. I really appreciate that. So one other mechanic in Ninja Gaiden 3 is the ability to grab onto uh, objects from below. And it's actually very crucial in this game that you like you get the, you get comfortable with that mechanic. The midair control in this helps so much too. Especially if you're like me and you haven't played this in a while and you're not well practiced at it. This is usually a game, you know, most of the uh, well, pretty much all the NES engine guiding games I played so much over the years. I don't really ever have to practice them. I can just jump right in. There's another extra life. It's uh, some of the other ninja guiding games I'll have to I'll have to worry more about. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna play like all the retro Ninja Gaiden games. There's, you know, when <laughs> when I started this stream idea, I was like, oh yeah, oh just NES games, maybe like the Game Boy game and the Lynx games, and that's about it. And then I realized, oh crap, there's the Game Gear game, there's the Master System game, there's the PC Engine game, um, and there's Ninja Gaiden trilogy on on Super Nintendo. If I really wanted to do that. There's the Mega Drive prototype. Oh, that's not good. The Mega Drive prototype. Let's see if I can show off the uh, the fire uh, shield. See, invincible. Spikes be damned. But yeah, the the fire shield also uses a lot of nimpo. But in the Japanese version, you get that that fire shield so much more often. And you know, there are a lot of spikes in this game. And it just makes life so easy. If you are going to try to learn this game and you're new to it, it might be good to actually start with the Japanese version. It might be a good idea. Because again, it's definitely easier, for sure. I don't think there's any, uh, there are any health refills here, unfortunately. Yeah, this is the boss fight, so I'm gonna have to do this boss without taking any damage. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. We'll see. Oops. That's not good. Ooh, I took a hit. Have I done the OG Ninja Turtles for NES? Uh, I did a Let's Play of it many years ago. Uh... It's actually one of my more popular Let's Plays, because I completely failed at it, and I raged at the end. It's a very old Let's Play. So yes, I've done it, but not to completion. I've never actually beaten that game. One of these years I'll get around to it, and I'll actually try to finish the game. I actually fired it up more recently. Um, I think I, I was just like doing a random practice session on Twitch, and I think I fired it up. And no, actually, I think it was one of my uh, more recent YouTube variety streams. That sucks. I didn't want to do that. That was my fault, too. I just completely, completely botched my timing there. That's okay. I think I'll be fine. Yeah, it looks like he shoots uh, fire five times. There we go. Not too bad. You beat Aladdin on SNES last night. I'm definitely starting small. <laughs> it's all good. A uh, a game finish is a game finish. You know, you got to start somewhere. You know, like back in the day for me, it's like I started on. I mean, 
granted, I grew up with the NES, so, like, I got to play Turtles when it was new, so it's not like, you know, I, I, I didn't have access to hard games. I mean, I grew up in, like, the hard game era. Um, but my earliest completions were the easier games, like Super Mario Brothers and Super Mario Brothers 2 and Super Mario Brothers 3. What they do? I mean, they were big accomplish accomplishments for me as a kid. Um, but you know, they were no Ninja Gaiden or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, there's a health refill. I do need that. Ah. Those things are always scary. Yeah, you can see how there's a lot of enemies in this game, too. Alright, uh, I think this is it. Should be a checkpoint, yep. Ooh, did not mean to do that. I was trying to duck, but Ryu did not duck. Yeah, one of the other cool things in this, uh, that actually came from Ninja Gaiden 2 is being able to use your Ninpo on walls. Another thing, uh, that Ninja Gaiden 2 brought to the table is being able to just climb up. In Ninja Gaiden 1, you had to do these, these like, little backflips off the walls to, in order to scale the walls. It's honestly more fun having to scale, like, having to work. It feels skillful. But I, I understand why they introduced the mechanic of just being able to climb straight up. I remember growing up, a lot of people struggled with the, uh, the wall climbing in, in Ninja Gaiden 1. Hey, Aberdeen, welcome back. life, which I kind of need. Let's go ahead and use this. Make life a little bit easier. Okay, I don't actually need that potion, so I'm going to go ahead and just skip it. We'll go ahead and use our shield again. So this guy throws some shurikens, and then he jumps over, like that. Oops, did I mean to do that? <laughs> yeah, you kind of want to sit back, you don't want to... You don't want to chase him like I was trying to do, but I had lots of health to work with. Ninja Gaiden Battletoads, Batman, and the Castlevania games you want to finally beat. I would probably start with the Castlevania games, I think, of those. I think they're the easiest. And then I'll go to Ninja Gaiden from there. Well, I would start with Castlevania 1. Then do Ninja Gaiden. Then I would do Castlevania 3. Then Batman. And then Battletoads, I think, of those is the hardest. Hey, Raymond, welcome back. Have I gone through the first two games already? Yes. In the 18 minutes I've been streaming, I have gone through all three Ninja Gaiden games. <laughs> I used Game Genie! No, I, I, I started with uh, Part 3. Because I'd like to try Part 3 on the links, I'd like to show that off for you guys. And, ooh, that was close. Um, yeah, I don't want to like do the first three NES games and then go straight to Part 3 on links. And just have two Ninja Gaiden 3s back to back. So, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I 
Uh, let's grab this Ninpo, and I'm being dumb, not paying attention. Yes, yeah, so we have ice physics here, so you do slip and slide. Which makes this part, uh... Seriously, dude, I was trying to run and run and slash, sorry, jump and slash, which is... A bad idea. Jumping and slashing on ground-based enemies is not a good idea in Ninja Gaiden's 2 or 3. It's really just a Ninja Gaiden 1 thing. So, that was my mistake. I ran right into that the top corner of that spike. That was bad. I don't think I've ever actually done that before. I'm gonna skip that ninpo. We're just gonna keep moving. Yeah, one of my problems right now is like I'm actually moving a little too fast. I need to just take my time. Ninja Gaiden 3 in particular, you, you're definitely best taking your time. And I don't know if there's going to be a health refill here, but I think uh, there's at least an extra life opportunity. We'll see if we can get that. Alright, another scroll. Again, that increases our maximum amount of Ninpo. Uh-oh, not good. Uh, Alright, one more hit and I'm dead. Now this level has this mechanic where if, like, you sink too deep into the, uh, the... You know, the platforms that you're on, uh, you'll actually die. It's almost like quicksand. Yeah, extra life right there. Uh, got it. Now, I'm probably gonna end up dying at this boss. Uh, because he's just got a, a really mean pattern where, like, he slams into the wall and, uh, basically these objects come down from the ceiling, but, like, they're completely random. So, there's a very good chance I'm gonna die here. Really difficult to do this without taking damage. See, yep, just like that. And hey, DG, welcome back. And welcome, Beholder. And Master Cheese, welcome back. You guys need to start using, like, real names. I wonder what, uh... <laughs> what people think when they watch these archives. And it's like... Oh, hey, Cheesemeister! Oh, hey, uh... Gamer... Gamerbro69! Uh, hey, uh... <laughs> Cat... Cat's Master! <laughs> like... <laughs> people watching the archives are like, Who the hell is he talking to? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, welcome back, guys. Actually, kind of want that extra life. There we go. That actually kind of canceled out our death. <laughs> Welcome, wife, you Humber87. <laughs> All right, I should should be reading chat when I'm uh, at a boss like this. And I'm playing so poorly today. I did some quick plays yesterday, some quick play recording. I played really well, and today I'm just not. Terrible pattern here, though. There we go. That's much better. Hey, Gudrun, welcome back. Ugh. Let's scroll up the chat here.
All right. Last level. Let's see if we can actually do this uh, without continuing. I really don't want to continue because then I have to do this whole level over again. And this is definitely the hardest uh, area in the game. So I always have to point this out. Oh, crap. But in Ninja Gaiden Trilogy on NES, or SNES, they got rid of the background scrolling. And so the sort of like wind mechanic that's constantly pushing you back is still there, but it doesn't... Because the background's not moving, it doesn't feel like you should be pushed back. It's just extremely awkward. I've got a, a lot of choice words for Ninja Gaiden Trilogy on Super Nintendo. <laughs> but that's all I'll say for now. I don't think we're going to play Ninja Gaiden Trilogy. You know, my, my main focus was playing the NES games again, and then trying the Lynx games, and then just kind of going from there. So I definitely want this orange Ninpo. That gives you all your Ninpo back. So, very important pickup. Get everyone you can see, or everyone you see. Alright, took some hits, not too bad just yet. Have to take my time here, though. Let's go ahead and switch over. Ooh, almost missed time that. That was really close. Yeah, there's some very tricky platforming here, as you can probably see. Alright, this is also a tough part. Just trying to focus. Yeah, this last level, honestly, in my opinion, is why so many people struggle with this game. And it's kind of like, it's kind of typical for this series, though. The last levels are always, like, the toughest in these games. Even in Ninja Gaiden 2. I mean, Ninja Gaiden 2's got a, you know, pretty crazy last level, too, that can give people trouble. Another extra life. I'm gonna take it. There's a good chance I'm gonna get to the boss here and then time out. It's like they don't give you enough time to do all three forms of the final boss. But this uh, level in particular is actually where the fire shield really comes in handy in the Japanese version. Uh, but you don't get it on this last level in the North American version. Alright, good timing there. All right, so these blocks, I like to just kind of jump forward one by one. Okay, good, got it. All right, I'm just gonna go forward like this, jump backwards. You know, again, this is where the, uh, you know, mid-air control helps so much. We only have 66 seconds. And we're only like halfway through this last last section. Like I said, the the lack of time here is uh, it's a pain. It really is. Oh, that's not good. I went the wrong way. Ah, I went the wrong way. And we're dead. Ooh, eye frames from the enemies helped me. Hey, pensive, welcome back. But, at least, you know, I got my time refreshed. Oh, that's not good. Forced damage. There's probably a better way of me handling that. Alright, same thing as before. We're gonna just kind of take our time here. There we go. And then run and jump. Good stuff. Oh, 
Oh, you gotta be freaking kidding me, dude. Alright, I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait it out. We have to jump over to the right, jump on this block. This is an evil final stage. If you haven't noticed already. The developers are probably like, okay, how do we outdo ourselves on the first two games? Spikes! Lots of spikes! I can picture it now. Alright, I'm just gonna wait for that laser. The slowest laser on the NES. Probably actually is. <laughs> there it goes, still going. Alright. So this guy will basically drop lightning three times after you hit him. Ow! That hurt. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be freaking kidding me, dude. Seriously? That's such an easy boss. I'm gonna do all this over again. Ugh, that's what's frustrating about this last part. Alright, if I get a game over, I'm not doing this level again. We're gonna switch over to our next game. That was inexcusable. I shouldn't have died there. And that was just totally my fault. Well, there goes half my health. There goes another... <laughs> ...quarter of it. Ugh. Getting salty! I don't want to get salty. I don't like getting salty. I was salty last week in my Game Gear stream. I don't want to be salty again. <sighs> Man, it's just so much work getting back to that boss. This game demands a lot of you. Oops. Forgot I have to go to the right. Yeah, this isn't good. We're gonna end up dying again. Uh, it's almost no point in me even continuing. I don't think I'm gonna be able to beat the game at this point. Not without continuing, I mean. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. I got so little health. That's the problem. Uh, we definitely want to switch. Yeah, very stingy in health refills too. <sighs> Lucky. Hey, LML, welcome back. It's probably gonna hit me. Yep. <laughs> Last chance. Last chance, guys. Yeah, I think that's what I have to do, in order to not get hit by those guys. Now, so, just so you guys know, the on the final boss, uh, whatever forms you've killed, they will have already been destroyed when you get back to them. So, all I need to do is just get back there, kill that, that second form, and then we might actually be good on the third one. The third one's actually not too bad. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh-oh, not good. Well, took a couple hits. Not great.
Sloppy! I have half of my health bar now. All right, last section. Good, good. Hey, Ego, welcome back. All right. This guy looks really menacing, but he's actually not that bad. Oh, we got it. Oh, we got it. Woo! <laughs> Still got the one credit clear, thankfully. <sighs> I'll let the ending roll out. Not that it really matters all that much since we missed all of the story. <laughs> Most balanced final boss in the trilogy. I don't. I don't know if you're being facetious or not, Scarlet. Oh man. Yeah, probably. The, you know, the worst thing about the final boss, in my opinion, is the fact that like they don't give you enough time to get through the last level and then defeat all three forms in one go. Um. Remember on one of my Let's Plays of this game, I got to the third form on my first run, and then I ran out of time, like, at the very end. So... Yeah, rough stuff. Oh, man. That's good to run through that game. I haven't done that in a while, actually. I, I oftentimes I play through Ninja Gaiden's one or two on stream here, but I don't mess around with part three for you guys uh, quite as often. You're being half serious. Welcome back. Wait, well, no, not really welcome back. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> this is your first time, so you obviously haven't been here before, but welcome. <sighs> hey, gotcha. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, society. I mean, I don't know. It's possible. It's possible Blade Runner might have had an influence. I see what you mean. I have played a lot of games by LJM. 
Yep, yep. Uh, I have no way of playing the arcade version on the Mister, so no. Well, I mean, I am gonna play the arcade version that was ported to the Lynx, but I'm not gonna play the actual arcade version because it's not replicated on the Mister. Everything that we're playing tonight, it can be played on the Mr. FPGA. And as far as I'm aware, there's no arcade core for Ninja Gaiden Arcade. And tune into one of my Mega Man live streams. Oh, I must have not caught your text. I know we had a lot of people watching on that stream. That was like... I was really surprised at how many people tuned in for that one. And it's funny you mentioned that. I had actually thought about doing Ninja Gaiden, not Ninja Gaiden, but Mega Man tonight. I was like, well, my last Mega Man stream wasn't that long ago. Because I've done a lot of Mega Man variety streams. I also wanted something a little bit shorter because those games can get kind of long. You know, Ninja, like Mega Man's 4, 5, and 6 are all, all at least an hour long. And I get kind of burned out by the end of them. So, but uh, let's go ahead and switch games. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I want to do, actually, come to think of it. Um, am I going to play another NES Ninja Gaiden? You know, I think I am. I think we're going to we're gonna go with tried and true. Yeah, Mega Gaiden. Yeah, maybe I should have made this a Mega Man and Ninja Gaiden stream. <laughs> that would have been a good idea. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden 1 is actually one of my favorite games of all time. I just, I love this game so much. Alright, let's jump into it. You're gonna get the arcade guide in soon and try to learn it well. Good luck with that. That game is a pain in the ass. It really is. Might be one of those cases where I actually prefer the home conversion of it, because it's more doable. The arcade version has this, I think it's the last level. You get to that, and if you die, um... Oops, I am messing up here. I'm not paying attention. I'm trying to do like speed strats, but <laughs> I should just play the game normally. Uh, yeah, Ninja Gaiden Arcade has this mechanic, I think, on the last level where like if you if you get a game over, it's just you go all the way back to the beginning. So it's it's kind of brutal. And I actually don't have any Nimpo. So Ninja Gaiden 1, like you actually don't get hurt by the, the guy's sword. Thanks for that, Red. Much appreciated, sir. We're gonna probably get a lot of that tonight. We've been we've, we've been getting a lot of them, unfortunately, lately. Yeah. All right, level two. No, you, you we have to get rid of those bots, Scarlet, because like I'll, my account will most likely get penalized if like they slip through and aren't uh, removed. It's one of the things I hate about them. If it was just like generic bots. You know, uh, maybe I wouldn't care as much, but with the porn bots, it's like, that could, like, have a negative effect on my channel. Man, not able to get that. There's been channels that have been, that they've, like, live-streamed and had, like, bot raids, and then their, their account has just gotten, like, taken offline completely. I don't know. It's, it's really, it's... It's a slippery slope I don't want to mess with. Just try to keep it clean as much as possible. Oh, you're talking about the harsh punishment in the arcade game. Gotcha, I thought you were talking about the bots. <laughs> yeah, because Red banned the bot, like, right as you said that. <laughs> but yeah, the punishment in the arcade Ninja Gaiden is, is... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I hit the ladder and hit the screen transition. But apparently, it went for the screen transition first before before the game thought I was on the ladder, and so it counted as me falling into a pit. That's a bummer. Oh, I missed the bat boost. What the freaking hell, dude? 
I'm not able to get any of this. We're gonna try that again. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. Went right over the bat. The new guy to one has this thing that we call the spin slash. And uh, you just press your attack in the air, it'll come out automatically. I'm gonna go ahead and take some damage because I don't have any more Nimpo outside of this. And you can kill bosses in one hit. Tom says they're gonna be here a lot, yeah, most likely. On uh, the last couple streams, they haven't popped in for at least a couple hours. So, the fact that they popped in in like the first 45 minutes is not, not cool. <laughs> Holiday weekend, right? <sighs> Oops. And one of the, th the things I love in Ninja Gaiden 1 is that... Oh God. I think one of the issues I'm having is I'm playing with a PlayStation Classic controller right now, not an NES controller like I normally do. Uh, and so, like, a lot of my timings are off. Ninja Gaiden 1 is one of those games where, like, you know, I, I don't need to practice it. I just, you know, I've got it memorized pretty well. Uh, I've got my timings, you know, they, they're still pretty good. Now, the Mister itself doesn't generally have input lag. Uh, however, the different controllers you can use, the different USB controllers you can use, uh, might have varying degrees of input latency, and that could also be a thing I'm dealing with. But, I mean, overall, it's felt perfectly responsive, so... Uh, Gedrin, if it has to do with the watching threshold, then that doesn't line up, because we had, like, 70 people watching in the first two hours last week, and we didn't have a single bot. We have less people now. So... I thought the same thing, but our views have, uh, fluctuated from stream to stream. And hey, CM Retro, welcome back. He loves Ninja Gaiden. We're just gonna fall down here. A lot of times, I try to do a damage boost strategy where you just try to jump from that top, that top platform. But I'm just gonna take it safe. Finally, got around to playing through the second one this year. It was okay, not as good or memorable as the first one. Interesting. Yeah, back in the day, everybody thought the opposite. I actually, I prefer the first one, personally. But part two's got some, like, amazing stage design. Um... And, you know, great music and all that stuff. It's definitely technically a step above Ninja Gaiden 1, but... Uh, personally, I prefer some of, like, uh, you know, some of the mechanics in the first game. For how the, like the hitboxes are and stuff like that, so I can just jump and slash through enemies. Also, I prefer the story in the first one. Um, I do find it uh, a little more interesting. Not that I'm really too much in the story in these these types of games, but you know it is a factor in my overall greater enjoyment of the first game. You don't need to practice this game, either. Well, see, I don't have that problem with any of the three Ninja Gaidens on NES. It's like, you know, I've been playing them for pretty much my entire life. And, uh... Oh, man, dude. My, uh... My wall jump just did not come out. Like, Ryu just, like, sat there. Like, what are you doing, man? Well, Ninja Gaiden 2 is, like, it's just, it's an awesome game. I don't know, maybe it'll grow on you more and more if you just keep playing it, you keep playing through it. One of those things where, like, you'll enjoy it more as you get better at it. 
Alright, so there's actually a health refill right there, and I'm gonna go ahead and just wall jump my way up. Ah, oh, there's a damage use I like to do here, and I totally forgot. Oh well. We're playing it kind of normal. Hey Grinch, welcome back. Team Retro thinks most people like Ninja Gaiden 2 because it's easier, just his opinion. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I mean, there are things you gotta admit are definitely better in the second game, like... Freaking hell, I just heard like a knock somewhere. Hold on a second, guys, this is weird. That was extremely weird. I, I heard this knock. It sounded like it was like right behind me. And uh So I had to go check. Uh but I mean like the visuals in Ninja Gaiden 2 are like a big step above like part ones. And uh, you know, you've also got like the Shadow Ninja, which is really cool. You've got things like I can't just press up and down to climb. Like that's a nice quality of life improvement. I mean, it's kind of hard to argue that, you know? And the game does have, like, some more gimmicks. It's got, you know, it in introduced things like ice physics, it, you know, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, you've got, like, uh, was it level three or four, where it's the, you know, lightning strikes and it flashes up the screen a little bit so you can actually see, see where you're going. There's just some really interesting stuff in it, so... You, know, you kind of put the two side by side, and part one definitely looks a little more dated. So I don't think it's fair to just say, like, people like it more just because it's easier. Um, I w it is, in my opinion, it is easier overall, but it still has a lot of tough parts. It still has a lot of tough parts. And Gaiden 2 actually has a lot of, like, really fast enemies um, that can really catch you off guard, so... You know, for some people, I've actually heard some people say they think part two is harder than the first one. Um, that's, I don't find it to be harder than the first one, but I've also been playing both games about equally, you know, since I was a kid. I played, I, I played both around the same time. Um... But, you know, as an adult, you know, there are definitely some things I prefer about the first one, and, um... As, as great as the soundtrack is in Part 2, I do think I prefer the soundtrack in Part 1 overall. Um... And then, um... You know, cutscenes and stuff like that, I definitely prefer them in the first game, because I just think the story is better written in the first Ninja Gaiden. Uh, Ninja Gaiden 2... just feels like... one of those, like, you know simplistic animes that um, is super predictable and not interesting and it's just like <laughs> I don't know it's hard to explain uh, but it's just not interesting and uh, but I mean again there are lots of things that uh, that part two definitely does better And, and, you know, from there, it's just all, like, it's a subjective thing. It's like, what do you prefer? So, actually, you know, I picked up the, uh, the fire shield. I didn't mean to do that. I prefer to try to keep my spin slash for this boss, but... Your health refills at this boss, and as long as you attack him fast enough, you'll, you'll defeat him. He's one of those bosses where you have to trade hits.
Oh yeah, no, I agree with the cutscenes aspect. Yeah, they definitely do drag on in the, in the second game. And, you know, again, like, to me, the writing's not very good. Like, as, as a kid, I, I didn't really care. Because I was a kid, I didn't really know any better. But as an adult, I'm like, oh man, that's like some really bad writing. <laughs> and the thing about bad writing is that, like, I, it just makes me not interested in the story. But I like the tone of the writing in the any in the first game on NES. You know, I like the the progression. There are some long story sequences in the first game too, but I do think they flow better, and it feels like they're just kind of like put in the right spots. All right, so. I want to save my spin slash for this part. That's one of the hardest parts in all of Ninja Gaiden. Go ahead and use our spin slash right here. We're going to bait this bat. Spin slash. Whoops. Let me just jump straight up here. Look at that. Nice little shortcut. Hey, Don, welcome back. Use our spin slash right there. That part's really annoying if you don't use your spin slash. Oops, did not want to get that. That's fine. Gonna do like a not really a shortcut, but yeah, there we go. We can also do it on this side too, which is kind of fun. Ugh. There we go. That's actually kind of funny. The uh, the drum samples <laughs> went away for a second, more than a second. Let's go ahead and get that. It's a uh, stopwatch. Not really a stopwatch, an hourglass, actually. It stops all time for a few moments. Yeah, some of my inputs are not coming out, which is very frustrating. Alright, another one. Alright, so I just need at least five Ninpo, and I'm gonna just hold right here. Just kill this guy in one hit. Yeah! Otherwise, that guy is uh, really hard. <laughs> Hi! Never knew you could bait the bat. Yeah, you, there's a lot of enemies in this game you can bait if you just stop and then just inch the screen forward. Or, like, jump forward slightly and then move back. This is the hardest boss for a lot of people. It's honestly not that bad if you know how to how to do it. If you know how to do the thing. And I mostly know how to do the thing. And there we go. Easy peasy. Society, I think your face is overrated. I actually don't know what your face looks like, but I'm going to say it's overrated anyway. Burn! How about we not talk about how things are overrated and just be like, hey, everything's cool. Unless you're D-Force, then you're not cool. Shrimp puking neck boss. Way easier than some of those Ninja Gaiden 3 final bosses, Scarlet. <laughs> uh. You ever try to use the spin slash to attack the boss? 
Yeah, he he goes away and then just spawns right back in, so it's it's pointless. <laughs> you know, trust me, I've done it many times just for fun. <laughs> right on, Grinch. <laughs> have I ever played roller games on NES? I have not. Maybe maybe one of these days I'll fire it up. Don says, I mainly like to watch any newcomer's reaction when they die on the final boss in this game. Yeah, it sends you all the way back to 6-1, and you can see, like, <laughs> you can see their hearts just, like, sink. <laughs> hey, Mario, welcome back. Oh, man. Oh wow, CM Retro. That that game actually looks pretty cool. I always avoided it because it was a cheesy theme, but I didn't realize it was, uh, I guess technically Konami, right? That definitely looks like Konami. Yeah, Ultra Games, that's, that's Konami. It's like big sprites and stuff like that. It's a little bit of a beat-em-up too. Interesting. Yeah, I'll have to try that sometime. That actually looks really cool. Maybe I'll even pick up the cartridge to add to my NES cart collection. Thirteen bucks cart only, and it's not too bad. Cool. Yeah, I'll check that out, CM Retro. Thanks for the heads up on that. It has a killer soundtrack too, nice. Yeah, that's kind of expected for Konami games. Did I do the original arcade game? I can't do the original arcade game because there's no Mr. Core for it. We're only playing all these on, on the Mr. tonight. Now we are playing the Atari Lynx version of Part 1, which is a part of the arcade game, but I assume you guys mean the actual arcade game. Uh, A. Vahanian says, Ah, do you want to tell you I finally beat the original TMNT on NES on May 26th, 2022. That was three days ago. Um, uh, hell yeah, congratulations on that. That's a good accomplishment. It's a really tough game. Uh, Rachel is a character from Blade Runner, and, uh, Irene there has a similar hairdo as, uh, as Rachel from Blade Runner. I think that was like a common anime style though for females back in like the mid 80s. So that might have just been all it was. You know. <laughs> See, Retro, she does look like Rachel from Blade Runner. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Ninja Gaiden 3 sends you back way more? No, it doesn't. Um. Ninja Gaiden 3's last levels are longer, but there are actual checkpoints on Ninja Gaiden 3's last levels. You only get sent all the way back if you get a game over. In Ninja Gaiden 1, on the final boss, if you die, doesn't matter how many lives you have, you get sent all the way back. I don't know the story behind it. I mean, I, I feel like I've heard that it was a glitch, that it wasn't intended, but they just decided to leave it in. <laughs> So, uh, it definitely makes the last parts of this game very punishing, and it's why a lot of people haven't finished this game. You know, they get stuck on that final stage that they don't want to learn it, and I don't, I don't blame them. Ninja Gaiden 1 was definitely one of my first controller-throwing games. Getting to the final level, final boss, then dying, get sent all the way back, oh yeah. 
Of course, in hindsight, it's not that bad. I mean, like, the entire game will take 15 minutes if you know what to do. Um, but, you know, it takes a long time to get to that point to where you can actually beat the game and then start, you know, learning faster strategies and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I love Blade Runner as well. Blade Runner is one of my favorite movies of all time. Like, definitely. And it's actually kind of interesting because it came out the year I was born. It, it was technically like before my time as a uh, movie watcher. So, all right. Well, we might as well um, just move on with part two. I mean, why not, right? So... That way, I, uh, that way, all you guys can agree with me about how much better the visuals and stuff are in part two. <laughs> no, I, I love all three Ninja Guidance on NES. Parts one and two are my favorites. Uh, three, I don't like as much, but I still, you know, I've, I've really grown fond of it over the years. Uh, the parts one and two are the most fun for me to just, like, zip right through. Oh yeah, DG, I enjoyed 2049 as well. Yeah. Galuska says NG and Ninja Gaiden 2 is my favorite. It's only weak point is the story in his opinion. Yeah. Yeah, like I've mentioned that a bunch of times already, but that's kinda like as I've gotten older I realize like the writing's not all that great and the progression of it's not all that great. But man, does it have some damn good music and some great graphics? And the gameplay is just really nice, too. Really good level design. This is the time of gaming where you could, like, kind of forgive stuff like that. Um, as long as, like, the core gameplay was really good. Um, you know, you could, like, overlook a lot of, like, the other shortcomings. Well, and it's like, you know what? Like, we didn't even... I don't think we really even saw them as shortcomings back in the day because the whole concept of, like, in-game cutscenes was still very new. You know, cinematic cutscenes. That was still very new in video gaming. Period. Especially on, like, home consoles. So, and a lot of us were kids, too, when these games came out. And we had no sense of what good writing was back then. Like, really simple... Stories were fine for us. And honestly, I really feel like that's why super simple stories and simple writing is still very much a thing today, is because they're they're pandering to kids. And, you know, having been a kid at one point in time, it kind of makes sense to me. But yeah, lots of like fun little shortcuts on bosses you can do by using your Shadow Ninja. They're like the, uh, options in the Gradius series. Where they just follow your every move and replicate whatever you do. Yeah, I mean, you can already see the visuals are, like, a big step above. There's, like, better color usage, there's more variety in the colors on screen. Um, there's more things happening, like, we've got multiple layers of background scrolling now. Like, there is literally zero background scrolling in Ninja Gaiden 1. It's- everything's completely flat. And then the whole Shadow Ninja thing just makes for some really fun gameplay. I mean, as far as actual gameplay is concerned, my- my... biggest, uh... you know, disappointment with this game is the fact I can't really jump and slash. Uh, on enemies that are on the ground. Like, the hitboxes are different in this. So I have to actually stop and attack the guys. I can only jump and slash if the enemies are higher up, kind of like this. So it's just a different dynamic, you know? And you get used to both how Ninja Gaiden 1 and 2 feel. You just have to, like, kind of put yourself in a different mindset when you play them. Yep, so this is where uh, the scrolls were introduced that you guys saw in part three. Extra life here. And also things like wind mechanics. Ooh. 
Yeah, wind mechanics, ice mechanics, water flowing mechanics. Definitely enhances the gameplay quite a lot. That was a health refill, but not a big deal. Don't really need it. I'll be fine at this boss. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Here we go. Extra life. Yeah, ninja options. <laughs> we'll call them ninja options. Yeah, this is probably one of the first, like, tough levels in the game because of the fact that you can't really see where you're going until lightning strikes. It's a very cool, like, gameplay design choice. Uh-oh. Okay, there we go. I love this tune, too. Really fits, like, the, uh... the darkness... theme. The theme of darkness. Alright, making good progress. As is usually the case in the Gaiden 2. I mean, this is a game you can really just rip right through when you know what you're doing. It's really fun. Now, just be warned, every other Ninja Gaiden game we're gonna play after this, I'm going to suck at terribly. <laughs> so, uh, you've been warned. Maybe not terribly, but I, I will definitely not be great, that's for sure. Ooh, I caught onto the uh, that platform. I didn't know you could do that. I got super lucky. Extra life. Your uh, your fire wheel here has like a huge hitbox, and so I was able to hit that guy that was in front of me, even from a distance. There are some fun little damage boosts you can do in this. Like that. This guy you can only hurt when he's in the air. Yeah, I'm not lighting these guys up right. That's fine. He's honestly like a, an easier version of Jackio from the first game. Just flies back and forth, back and forth. Have I played any of the newer Ninja Gaiden games like Sigma? Uh, I've only played the first one on the original Xbox. I did finish that like a good 13 or 14 years ago. It's been a long time now. It's one of those games I want to go back to and try to learn again so I can stream it here. I do want to get more into those, uh, or get into more of those, like, you know, 3D action games like that. I need to finish The Devil May Cries I haven't finished yet, like, Part 3, and, uh, um, I need to do Part 4 again sometime soon. I want to try to play through Bayonetta for the first time, then maybe Bayonetta 2. Yeah, I want to play through more of those, what they call, character action games such a dumb name for a genre, but they're kind of like the modern-day equivalents of these games. <laughs> Partly thanks to the original Ninja Gaiden on Xbox. More importantly, Devil May Cry on PS2. Like, holy crap, that game was amazing when it came out, and it still is amazing. But Ninja Gaiden would follow up with a take on that formula, 
in its own style. And then bring back the Nishigaiden series, because there hadn't been a Nishigaiden game in quite some time. So, great move on Tecmo's part. Alright, so we have water physics here. Well, the water pushes you. Lots of damage boosts we can do here as well. Oops. Hey, I see something from Jeff. Let me turn that up. Uh, I had actually turned it down when I watched that Roller Games gameplay video. But hey, Jeff, thank you very much for that, man, and good to see you. It's been a little while. Whoa, okay. That was kind of scary. That guy just <laughs> went right through that wall. I want to do another damage boost right here. To get that extra life early. Thank you very much again, Jeff. Hope all is well. Hope you guys are also enjoying the Ninja Gaiden. We ran through part three first, then we went through part one, now we're on part two. This guy, you have to watch out for his hands, they just alternate sides. Really simple boss fight. Nice. Much better. Steve was playing some right now. Well, right, Don? Like, that's. I don't like the whole character action game genre name. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. But that's what some of these bigger YouTubers call, like, Devil May Cry and Ninja Gaiden and, uh, Bayonetta and stuff like that. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, you know, stuff like that. They're apparently character action games. It's like, hey, I had no say in what this genre name was called. I want my money back. Honestly, I would just call them, like, 3D action games or something. And that's too logical, though, you know? We've got to be, like, you know... We've got to give genres creative names now with... I don't even know where I'm going with this. I'm going to end up sounding like like an old man. Get off my lawn! <laughs> I think it more has to do with... Uh, you know, 3D action games that have, like, a... <sighs> I don't want to say a focus on characters, but... almost more like flamboyant characters that are over the top and have, like, crazy moves and tons of combos and stuff like that. You know, stuff that, like, Devil May Cry kind of pioneered, and then Bayonetta and Ninja Gaiden, you know, kind of took after. And extremely over-the-top, uh, you know, moments. I mean, those are at least the parallels I can make, you know, for all those games. <laughs> Alright, so everybody's favorite, Ice Physics. Yeah, God of War, I guess. CM Retro calls them 3D action games, right? I mean, I think the whole character action game thing actually kind of originated more from, like, the community than it did, like, the press or, you know, anyone really in the in industry. That's my guess, anyway. It's kind of like the term shmups. Like, that was mostly coined by fans of the genre back in the 90s, like, the mid to late 90s. Now, the term STG had always been around in Japan, but we never really used that in North America. And so community, you know, shmups fans in the community back in the day just coined the term shmups. I think we used to call them shoot 'em ups, 
or at one point in time we used to call them space shooters. But after a while, we just started calling them shmups. <laughs> Which honestly, the term shmups is kind of equally as dumb as character action game. There, I said it guys. Time code it now. <laughs> Saying shmup is much more natural to me, though, because I've been saying it for such a long time. You know? The 90s. Before Devil May Cry was a thing. And when 3D action games were more jank than anything. Ah, the good old days. <laughs> Austin with a hot take! <laughs> you think Metroidvania was from the press, though? Yeah, it, it likely was. I mean, a lot of stuff back then, a lot of the descriptions that were given to games, they were from the press. Um, you know, it was a way of, like, labeling games so consumers would kind of have an idea of what they were getting themselves into. You know, even back then, people had ideas of what, like, genres were that they, they liked over others, and so... You know, that's where, like, categorizations for games came from. Well, some categorizations. I mean, categorizations have been around since the very beginning of the in industry. Like, you know, Atari labeled their games as, like, sports and... and board games or, or something like that. I don't remember. Um, I think that's how it was. But the press definitely had a lot of influence on what other genres were eventually named. to the last level. Lots of stuff happening on this last level. You know, I can see this being pretty tough for, for newer players. But it's definitely one of those where, like, you can really get a handle on it once you get good with using your, your firepower. No pun intended, I'm actually using a fire weapon right now. But, you know, your sub-weapons. Jade Fist, yes, Ninja Gaiden 2, absolutely. Uh, let's skip that, because the fire wheel is better. Uh oh, I messed up there, that was dumb on my part. Jeff says, uh, Castlevania started doing the Metroid thing since Simon's Quest. Yeah, I mean, a bunch of games at the time were doing that. I mean, Zelda 2. Um, you know, Castlevania 2. Strider on NES, actually, did some, some things like that. Um... Hell, Bionic Commando, wasn't even that, like, non-linear? There's a bunch of games doing some interesting things. an extra life up here, which I do not need. Uh, 
Yeah, and I've still barely gone anywhere in Bionic Commando. Guardian Legend? I mean, Guardian Legend, it's still, like, like level by level, though, right? I know you kind of... You explore the levels one by one, and they have their own unique layouts and puzzles and whatever, but it's still level by level, I thought, in that game. Man, yeah, Blaster Master's... Yeah, Blaster Master is... Yeah, you can go wherever you want in that game. It's actually required, so... It's another one I haven't finished. You know, I never thought of handling that boss that way. Bunch up your Shadow Ninja, and then, um... Shoot three projectiles. Easy. CM Retro wants to get into the Guardian Legend so bad, he started playing it, but he didn't know what to do. Yeah, I want to do the same thing, but I haven't played that game in such a long time. I don't even remember what it's like. Remember, it's like a shoot 'em up slash, uh, you know, action adventure game hybrid sort of deal. Just beat Ninja Gaiden 2. Yeah, it only took us an hour and a half to go through all three games in the NES.
And the ninja castle falls again, yep. <laughs> Thanks for the GG's, everybody. Gedron says, okay, time to feed my cat. I'm gonna have to feed mine in a, uh, probably about an hour. Dimmick says, Battletoads is the hardest NES game to beat. Yeah. I think it is a very frustrating game, but I do think there are harder NES games. Battletoads is mostly, like, rote memorization. Uh, so, it's a matter of a time commitment, like, as long as you can put the time in, and you've, you know, you get the, you get the skills down, you're, you're pretty much good to go. But I think there are other NES games that have a lot more randomness, or just, like, really poor design, that are extremely difficult to beat. I know, I think, I don't know if it was Andy Author, or if it was MBD, um, but they were saying Bump and Jump is, like, ridiculously difficult, even compared to Battletoads. And there were a, a bunch of other NES games like that, I think. Battletoads is probably the hardest to learn of the more memorization-heavy games, like Ninja Gaiden, Castlevania, and the Mega Mans, whatever. But Battletoads... It is the same kind of like, you know, memorization you get with a Castlevania game or something like that. Yeah, you, know, like you have to learn everything, but in Battletoads, there's so much to learn because a full playthrough is like an hour long with 12 levels, and every level just about has its own unique gimmicks. So it's a lot to take in. Whereas, like Ninja Gaiden, it's like the same gimmick, but for the whole game. So, Battletoads, it's a new gimmick for every level. All right, later, Red. Have a good night's sleep. Good to see you again. Thanks for uh, bot duty. Yeah, CM Retro. Limited continues does make it tough. It means that, you know, if you want to try later stages in the game, you either have to resort to cheats or you've got to try to take warp zones to get there, and even that still takes time. And that's the other hard part, and that's one reason a lot of people haven't finished Ninja Gaiden 3, because that also has limited continues. Society, yes, the Game Gear Battletoads is definitely harder. I can, I can absolutely agree with that. And I, I couldn't find any cheats online. I don't even know if they were like Game Genie cheats for it. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Now, unfortunately, I have the game room door shut today, so you guys won't see Patchy or Milo. They are a handful, man. They just want to jump all over my desk while I'm doing things up here, and it's just... Yeah. Not great. Yep, Japanese Ninja Gaiden 3 does not have continues, and it's also a little bit easier overall. There are some uh, item placement differences, and uh, you might even take less damage in the Japanese one. I did, Jeff, yeah. Uh, ex cost is a non-issue in this day and age when you've got things like the Mister, you've got flashcards, you've got emulation, it's like... Yeah, I don't ever factor that into, like, these retro games that are just easy to emulate and whatever. Anybody can play them. You don't need to own a game to play it these days. Actually, I'm kind of curious what the Famicom Ninja Gaiden 3 sells for these days. When I bought a cartridge uh, years back, it was actually pretty cheap. Um... Let's see. Yeah, it looks like they've gone up in price. They're like 50 bucks now. At least if you buy them in North America on eBay. That's a bummer. When I bought it, it was like 20. It's not too bad. But, you know, I always tell people, you know, if you want to play games that 
costs like 50 bucks and I'll just get a flash cart. <laughs> It'll pay for itself in two games you play. So, alrighty guys, we are going to, uh, uh, we're going to switch cores. So we're going to actually go over to the Atari Lynx. And we're going to do the arcade port of Ninja Gaiden 1. And uh, let's see. This is actually quite interesting, and this is going to take up uh, most of the screen. So we're going to go ahead and use a different border. There we go. So yeah, for those of you guys that have never seen the Atari Lynx, it's actually a really cool handheld. Um, Got some, uh, some interesting arcade conversions, like the first Ninja Gaiden, the arcade game, not the NES game. And uh, it's actually pretty good. Now, I don't know if I have my buttons mapped correctly here, uh, so we're going to see. All right. Um, okay. That's jump. I have to get used to this game again. It's been a while since I played it. But basically, you've got jump, you've got punch, and then if you jump forward and press punch, you will throw enemies. And that's actually a really important mechanic in this game. You throw enemies through objects, and they'll reveal power-ups. You can also knock them into objects. I think that little red thing was just like a point icon or something. Yeah, throwing is actually very good in this game. Alright, now I have to figure out how to latch onto these objects. I don't think I mapped all my uh, Link's uh, functionality. Yeah, I don't think I did. Uh, let's see. Uh, define our target Link's buttons. Press right, left, down, up. Uh, A, B. Option one, option two, pause. Uh, I don't want fast forward. I have to turn on my little mini keyboard. Okay, and we just hit enter. There we go. And save settings. Let's see, all right. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, it's one of the option keys allows you to latch on. So you can latch onto these objects and then kick. And you can also jump off. So yeah, pretty pretty important functionality there. But you want to try to throw enemies into all the objects that you can, because again, that's how you get upgraded. Like that is more time, so I definitely want that if I can get it. Got it. That was just fire. Let me jump up here, see if I can knock these guys into this box. time. I, I think the power-ups are completely randomized. Alright, let's come on down here. Ooh, the sword. The sword is ex insanely good in this. I have to take some damage. Use my iframes to get through it. Oh, it disappeared on me. You gotta be kidding me, man. Oh, that sucks. Mashing my attacks, hoping they just run right into it. I'm trying to throw him into that, that table. There we go. Oh, nice. Got my health back. Very good. Try to throw him. 
You can even throw these big guys here. Now, this game looks super pixelated. Uh, for one, the Atari Lynx has kind of a low screen resolution. Um, but also, what you're seeing is like blown up like a ridiculous amount of times in size compared to like what you would see on a Lynx screen. Like a Lynx screen is probably like four inches. So imagine this like squished down to a, a much smaller screen size. Everything looks a lot better on that. More time. I don't need more time. I need some uh, health upgrades. Just trying to knock them off. All right, let's try to latch on. There we go. It's kind of awkward. You can just knock these guys off in one hit. And look, ninjas that look like Ryu from the uh, Xbox Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> of course, this game came about uh, 14 years before that. It's a long time. Any day now, guys. Ha! <laughs> he just committed suicide. Cool. Okay, why is this not progressing? It's like, did I not kill enough? Okay, there we go. Alright, I think we're at the boss now. Let's see if any of these things can give us some health. Mike's his original Xbox Ninja Gaiden was brutal. Oh, and I died. Ah, and that was a full health refill right there, too. It sucks. Swords. Unfortunately, the sword is a time-limited power-up. You want to use it as much as you can. I think that's it. Yeah, E Honda. <laughs> Saying that a lot tonight. There we go. I was trying to throw him off, but my throw didn't work. Looks like I can just like force the screen over. All right, jump over. Nice, got my health back. They're dead. I was just waiting for them to come back up. A little bit of health. I want to try to throw him. Ooh, I did like a wall jump. Totally forgot you can do that. All right, that's all of my health back right there. Got it. Try to attack these guys, knock them into that box. The whole box mechanic and breaking object mechanic, I should say, is really important in this game. I 
actually do wonder if it's worth, like, punching them a couple times and then throwing. Kind of like that. Maybe if you've got one or two enemies on screen, but not three. Point icon. One of the great things about the Lynx is that it can handle a lot of sprites on screen without really slowing down. So, you know, this actually has a lot of enemies on screen. Especially by handheld beat em up standards at the time. Jump up! There we go. Alright, doesn't look like I can push the screen over at all either. Oops. Okay, cool. hoping that would give me some power-ups, but no, it just gave me fire. Unfortunately, fire doesn't do me a whole lot of good. Alright, I think that's it. I think we are at the boss. Yeah, music change. We need some health. Ryu needs food badly. Oh. I think you can actually throw these guys. Yeah. you could jump kick or something, you know? If you just jump and you don't throw, you, you don't do anything. <laughs> it's just for show. It seems like if you punch them, they go into, like, berserk mode. These guys are more aggressive now. Can't I pick that up? Alright, got it. Oh, missed the ad time. 
Oops, disable the music. And pressing some of the option buttons will actually disable sound. That was one of the features of the Lynx. Alright, nice, got a sword. Uh, jump up. Are you serious, dude? Ugh. Yeah, the AI is a lot more aggressive now. They're just overriding my attacks. Uh, I still have no lives left. Oh, swords again. That's not good. Oh, nice! <laughs> Thanks for that, guys! There's a lot happening in this game. More swords. I keep saying swords like it's plural because there are two swords listed on the icon. I guess technically it's only one sword. <laughs> We're about to game over. Yeah, this is a lot more intense than I remember. Ugh. I was expecting this white ninja to just die in one hit. We'll continue. Looks like it puts me back at the beginning. Gonna have to use this mechanic. It's got a good reach. Well, it seemed like it did. <laughs> this is just mean. <laughs> There's so much going on. Just gonna keep mashing the button. Yeah, I think that's what I have to do. It's just attack quickly. Ooh, extra life. I'll take that. Hey, Uber. Oh, you guys have never seen the continue screen in the arcade game? It's pretty violent. <laughs> Alright, I died. It's okay, we had four lives. You know, I just realized the level in the arcade game where you're going across the highway is completely missing. Yeah, level 2 in the arcade version, you're having to run across highways with moving cars and stuff like that. It's a little frustrating. And it doesn't seem to exist here.
I should be dropping down. I think that's I think that's the intended strategy. Is you drop down, you kind of bait the enemies downwards, and by doing so, you can get some like cheap shots on them. Yeah, see like that. Whoa, I threw him from up top. <laughs> that was not intended. It's good to know though. Ah, oh, he overrode my attack again. I'm dead again. Uh, Uber, we actually did all three Ninja Gaidens on NES already. Yeah, so now we're on, uh... Non-NES Ninja Gaiden games. If you can throw these guys. Yeah, I pretty much have to throw them. <sighs> hey, Dasan, what's going on? I think we'll switch games after this, because I'm terrible at this. Like I said, I mentioned, like, Anything past the NES games, I'm going to be terrible at. Yeah, my throw doesn't seem to want to work half the time. It's like, you've got to be very particular about it. Yeah, that sounds very warm, Jeff. Thankfully, it wasn't that warm here today. I might continue on this level, actually, because this might be the last stage. I know some levels were cut in this version. Ah, uh, you know what? I might not continue. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna get to the end. Oh, extra life, conveniently. I've got to use these poles more often. Yeah, this is kind of insane. Just get rid of me. I'll continue once more, actually. Alright, so I need to do what I was talking about earlier. I kind of bait enemies up and down, or maybe just use this? God, he's got such reach. Overrode my sword. Oh, 
Eso es. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> I need that. Thank you. Yep, man, those guys, they just override my attacks. It's frustrating. And the problem is, is like you've got so many enemies to deal with, you have to literally take advantage of this ridiculous strategy where you just jump up, then jump down. Jump up, then jump down. I wanted to grab onto that, but I wasn't fast enough. These guys again? Go figure. All right, he's dead. And I'm dead again. Interesting that when you jump straight up, you actually kind of go up a little bit on the Z axis. Axis. Oops, man, they do a ton of damage. Yeah, what would have helped this game in particular is uh, being able to throw enemies into other enemies. But you can't do that. It's like you can throw, but you're just left wide open. See it like that. Game over. Oh, and you get limited continues too. Wow. <sighs> yeah, this is Atari Lynx. This is not Master System. Uh, Atari Lynx was a handheld, so yeah, the screen resolution, or I should say the, the resolution was low. And it wasn't really that big of a deal because it was a tiny screen. So, but uh, yeah, we're going to switch over to, since we're still in the Lynx core, we're going to switch over to Guiding 3 on the Lynx and see what we can do with that. So interestingly, Ninja Gaiden 3 was actually a conversion of the uh, the NES game. But it doesn't sound nearly as good. And it doesn't look nearly as good. But it's still interesting. Yeah, the sound in this one is not... Not great. <laughs> it's really not. Alright, let's actually just skip that. Let's just jump right into it. So actually my controls are reversed. <laughs> it's gonna take some time to get used to. Yeah, I actually beat this game back in the day. Uh, so we'll kind of see what we can do with it here.
Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking with the sound. The Lynx was definitely capable of better sounding music than this. Probably just a lack of effort. The gameplay itself is, uh, it's actually fine. It's interesting. Yes, we started with Gaiden 3, now we're back to Gaiden 3. It's actually interesting, the uh, boss information's on the bottom. It's actually kind of nice how they how they did that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, also keep in mind, guys, that, you know, this is blown up like crazy, so it doesn't look as bad on an actual Link screen. So, yeah, just keep that in mind as you're, as you're watching these two games. But yeah, I mean, basically what they did is they went for, uh, like a faithful recreation of the NES game, like jacking the same sprites and everything. And just kind of, like, shrinking them down. I'm actually gonna wonder, like, uh, how the, uh, you know, the last level hands out, or turns out, like, in terms of, like, the time, the time limit, on the NES game, you, uh, you know, you, you're basically, you're basically guaranteed to run out of time on the final boss, on your first run up to it. Ninja Scroll. Uh, Uber, would those bots just hide them from the channel? Don't just delete the messages, like, like, literally hide them from the channel. That's basically the... basically banning them. Huh, he's constantly flashing. That's interesting. Wonder why. Yeah, if you hide them from the channel, it'll delete all their messages automatically. So you don't have to click them one by one. And we're gonna ban them anyway, they're just dumb bots, so... You would have done that way earlier, now it's all good, man. <laughs> now you know! <laughs> Modding on a YouTube live stream chat is a little bit different from Twitch. And they made those fish way larger, which is actually kind of interesting. Theoretically, it makes them easier to hit. Missed the extra life again. Do you see how, like, the enemy placement and stuff is pretty faithful to the NES game? So, if you're good at the NES game, you should be able to get through this. Of course, I say that now. Watch me struggle with the final stages. And, uh, it looks like the music didn't actually change up here. So that's interesting. Yeah, and these, like, little flames here are supposed to be, like, ball-like enemies. They're just flames in this one. It's kind of interesting.
Man. I don't have my big sword. That's right. We don't you don't get the big sword till like the very end here. Oh, he did it. It ate my input. I tried jumping and I just fell off. I think one of the uh, sources of potential input drops is actually the fact that this runs at a slightly lower frame rate than the NES one. So you've got less frame time to actually, you know, react. So... Sword's gonna be here, just like earlier. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, very faithful uh, enemy placements. All right, there we go. <laughs> it's all good, Uber. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, dude. I got super greedy. Alright, have a have a good night, Jade. Thanks for hanging out for a little bit. Oh, I didn't mean to grab onto that wall. That screwed me. Yeah, I'm not gonna say, like, I would recommend anybody go out of their, their way to play this version of the game, but back in the day, uh, you know, it was about the only way to play, like, actual NES, full-on NES Ninja Gaiden game in, in handheld form. You had Ninja Gaiden Shadow on Game Boy, which was, which was really good, we might play that later. Um, but it wasn't, that wasn't actually a Ninja Gaiden game, originally. It's kind of like Ninja Gaiden in name. Still a great game. Um, but, yeah, this is an actual NES Ninja Gaiden game. Oh, you gotta be freaking kidding me, dude. <sighs> Man, I am just... I'm actually getting really tired already, which is kind of stupid, because I, I woke up not too long ago. Uh, I think I just need some caffeine. Need more caffeine. Need to get caffeinated. Oh, so this low frame rate is not helping my eyes, that's for sure. Low frame rate and low resolution. Whoops, that was my fault. Alright, let's try this again. Hey, Galimio, no, this is how the Lynx is. It has a wider aspect ratio than, you know, like SNES or Genesis or something like that, or Game Boy.
Uh, let's try this again. Oh, for fudge's sake, man. We're gonna have to do that whole level over again. Oh, man. It looks like you only get five continues like the NES one. Yeah, this is definitely modeled after, after the North American one, I can tell. Oh, I don't know how I still survived that, but okay. I was able to actually get the extra life. Oh, so the music did actually change, I just realized. It's just the music is so, like, inaudible that it's hard to tell when the tunes change. Audio is definitely not a highlight of this version. Oh, man. I don't feel like I'm taking that many hits, though. Like, I wonder if, like, the damage output was increased in this version. Ugh. Landed right on top of him. My shield ran off. Or ran out. Yeah, my shield ran off without me. <laughs> it ran off to a better game. <laughs> or a game with better audio, at least. Nope. Oh, it ate my input again. Let's try this again. Same thing as the NES one. Run over this way. Climb back up. Jeez, they do a ton of damage to this. Okay, we got it. <laughs> hey, NES Attic, no, this is part three on the Atari Lynx. It's a port of the NES version. Does it, Mike? I don't think it uses the 2600 sound chip. <laughs> it's just this, uh... 2600 sound chip is much more harsh than this is. This is... the music sounds the way it does here because of laziness. Uh, and the Lynx is perfectly capable of some some really fun, solid music. I mean, just listen to stuff like uh, the title screen of Blue Lightning, or the whole soundtrack for Shadow of the Beast. 
Or even first Ninja Gaiden on, on Lynx does does way better than this. Oh, there, that was close. Yeah, it's just whoever the sound designer was for this game did a hack job. And it's in, you know, it's entirely possible. It was like a 32X Doom situation where like, they didn't even really have a sound designer. <laughs> Big sword. Let's just take our time here. Oh, I slip off the platform. That was my fault. I fought completely. Jump. Yeah, same pattern. Yeah, he goes to wherever you are in the screen, so I should have actually stayed up on one of the platforms. It's interesting, you can actually pause the cutscenes in this. This is another reason I wanted to actually start with part three in the NES. That way you guys could see like the direct comparisons. You can just skip around the video and Oh, that's not good. Skip around the video, kinda go back and forth, and uh you know make direct comparisons on your own. It seems like there's an input buffer issue. If I mash the attack button too quickly, Ryu will mash multiple times even if I stop attacking. Uh-oh. That was bad. Ugh. <laughs> I'm going- I'm taking this way too quickly. Getting punished for it. Looks like I have two lives left. Take it slower this time. I've got half of my health. Seriously, dude. Ugh. Ugh. 
Even a little bit of added jank to this version. Alright, I'm gonna actually kill myself, use a continue, because this is just... I'm probably gonna end up dying again, so... I'll go ahead and sacrifice or continue for the cause. Uh, Red Sea Ranger, you do realize when the Lynx came out, right? And are you gonna judge an entire platform based on a single game? Come on, you're better than that. For the record, it came out the same year as the Game Boy. I mean, so... <laughs> it's just... Oh, I don't even know why I'm trying. I'm too salty right now to be thinking for other people. Oh, why did I do that? I'm an idiot. Red is great. Doesn't know a single thing about retro games, but it's entertaining. Well, I'm glad it's at least fun to watch. Not gonna lie, this makes me want to see a homebrew Vice Project Doom on the links. That that could be interesting. I mean, unless it was redone, though, it'll come out looking a lot like this, though, unfortunately. <laughs> Tom says, never knock a platform that has write-in on it. <laughs> to be fair, Tom, Link's write-in's not all that great. It's not, it's not, like, horrible, but it's, uh... Definitely pales compared to a lot of other versions of write-in. Still a fun shooter on the Lynx. Yeah, unfortunately, the Lynx did not have a lot of shoot 'em ups, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, the Lynx is superior to the Game Gear. You're looking at a conversion of an NES game, dude. Like, don't make assumptions based on a port of a sh an NES game. This is. I don't know. Have you seen then NES Ninja Gaiden 3? This is it. Just in handheld form. That's all this is. It's like, I would definitely implore people with that attitude to go look up actual, like, original Lynx games or ports of non-NES games before, like, making any judgments. Lynx has, like, built-in hardware scaling, you know, <laughs> like, stuff that's even more impressive than, like, Mode 7 on Super Nintendo. It's crazy what the Lynx can do. You know, look up stuff like Blue Lightning, look up stuff like uh, Shadow of the Beast, uh, look up stuff like uh, Electro Cop, if you want to see, like, you know, the hardware capabilities. But you don't judge the links based on Ninja Kaiden 3. That said, I mean, it did... The gameplay fairly, you know, did it justice. It still plays just like Ninja Gaiden 3. I think that was the point. There we go. <laughs> Tom says, right in on Lynx. It's kind of like pizza. It might not be the best, but at least it's pizza. <laughs> Galimio says, right in on Lynx sounds nuts. Definitely looking it up later. It's not that amazing, Galimio. Uh, I'll, I'll try to do an Atari Lynx stream sometime here in the near future, and I'll show it off to you guys. 
It's one of those Lynx games that has to be rotated. And, uh... Is there less flicker on the Lynx version? You know what? I haven't really noticed flicker. Um, that's actually a good observation. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Society says, I just ordered pizza. Hope it's a good one. I'm crossing my fingers for you. I'm just getting wrecked here. Yeah, Uber, I don't know if you were around when we did the Game Gear stream last week. I don't know if you stayed the whole time, but... Uh, we did play Game Gear Ninja Gaiden. And depending on how I feel, I may even play it again on this stream, because it's not that long. Because I don't know how many people actually stuck around for it on the Game Gear stream. DG says his pizza earlier was awesome. Yeah, you had mentioned getting pizza. I think right as you popped in. I didn't get to read the uh, full comment. I mean, I'm gonna stick this out. We are getting close to the end of the game. I think this is like the second to last stage. Nicholas, I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. And I think you should probably stop worrying about it, because that doesn't sound healthy. <laughs> I've never... Like, whenever I've heard the term Mode 7, I've never seen it applied in an, el in, in an elitist way. Like, I don't even know what you mean by that. <laughs> mode 7, brah. It's so elitist now. Like, what? The hell? I am so confused. It's probably better than the SNES one. A lot of input lag there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. SNES Ninja Gaiden Trilogy can definitely eat some frames, especially in Ninja Gaiden's 2 and 3, unfortunately. So it's this boss again. <laughs> the one with uh, random rock patterns. And I still got hit by that. Alright, we got this. <laughs> Society's having super high hopes for this pie. <laughs> you were there. I did Shinobi after. Okay, yeah. That's right. You had asked about Shinobi on Game Gear, and I was like, oh, man, I don't really want to play that game. And then I did. And then I remembered why I didn't really want to play that game. <laughs> but I tried. Oh, hey, this is like Super Nintendo Ninja Gaiden Trilogy. There's no, uh... It still has the, uh... The air pushback. Let me go ahead and just get a game over. It's got the air push back, but no uh, scrolling background. GG, Lynx, GG.
you know, we'll see if we can actually get through the rest of this. This will actually be the... I mean, if I do actually manage it, this will be the first full playthrough I've done in the Lynx version in about, uh, 22 years. <sighs> actually, maybe even longer. It was the late 90s when I got the Lynx for the first time, probably... 97 or 98. That's when I got into the platform. A lot of stuff on the links back then was super cheap, and so I had a pretty big library. Had a, both a Lynx 1 and a Lynx 2. They were quite affordable in the late 90s. Unlike today. But as a big Ninja Gaiden fan, I obviously wanted to play through this, and I did multiple times, but never really gone back to it for more than a couple of minutes, just out of sheer curiosity. It's, you know, I don't really, you know, anyone that's actually been watching this, obviously I don't really need to explain why. Like, if I had this in 92 or 93, whenever it came out, and I had a Lynx, like, I, I would have loved it, no doubt, but it is redundant. It's quite redundant. Tom's is nothing affordable in retro gaming anymore. Well, a lot of stuff is kind of cost prohibitive, but there's still affordable things. Hey, Scott, welcome back. Society says, how much was the links on release? I honestly do not remember Society. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna toss out a price because I don't remember. I wouldn't be surprised if it was something like 150. Game Boy, I believe, was like 89 or 100. Uh, Game Gear, I think, might have been 100. And I think the links might have been more expensive. But don't quote me on that. Go look it up. It ate my input. I pressed the jump button, Ryu just fell off the platform. One thing that's actually not helping me at all is that my Lynx controls are actually reversed. <laughs> so it's like a Mega Man anniversary on GameCube. Where your buttons are reversed, and you can't change them. I mean, I can technically change them here if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I've been playing the- doing the whole playthrough with this control set up, so I'm just gonna live with it. Live with it for the rest of it. Metalhead says Lynx was 180. Interesting. Yeah, so it was even higher than 150. That's crazy. I mean, it was pretty advanced hardware for the time. I mean, especially for a handheld system. I kind of wish I was I was showing this off in a regular Lynx variety stream, because then I could just swap to a different game and show you guys, like, you know, how much better the hardware uh, can be utilized. One of my favorite aspects of the Lynx wasn't so much, like, just the, you know, the hardware scaling and stuff like that, but the fact that, you know, there was a lot of, like, big chunky sprites on it, and, uh, you know, oftentimes really smooth animation. Again, Shadow of the Beast is, like, another great example. I love the animation in that version of Shadow. Ugh. I am getting wrecked here. Man, I totally mistimed that. Alright, we're getting past this without taking a hit. It's gonna be a little hard. I think we did it earlier. Ah, uh, never mind. Spoke too soon. I'm 
gonna I was gonna say I was gonna skip that Nimpo, but I think I actually screwed myself by doing that. It's actually looking very likely that we're not gonna finish this version. Yeah, we'll have to do an Atari Lynx stream sometime soon. It's kind of like I've been wanting to do a Game Gear stream for a long time. I've been wanting to do a Lynx one for a while, too, but... I didn't download the Lynx Mr. Core until just recently, actually. Uh-oh, I didn't mean to jump. Pressed the wrong button. It's like the NES one, there should be another extra life up here. And just like the NES version, I'm definitely not going to have enough time to get to the final boss. Ugh. Oh, you got to be kidding me! Come on! That was my fault, I should have waited. <sighs> Avenged Guy says this game seems relentless! Uh, it is. Oh wow, all the way back here. Is it the same in the NES version? It probably is. Ugh. Let's do that all over again. There goes half my health. Fantastic start. Some pretty, pretty tricky platforming. Huh. I wonder if I get an extra life from points. I heard like a little jingle I've never heard before. Latching onto that other platform. Which I'm obviously not trying to do. Alright, let's try this again. Lives. Wow, we might actually get this. Whew. Hey, Phil. Phil says the NES version is just like this. Yeah, I mean that's the thing about this version of the game. It it's just about a one-to-one -one recreation of the NES version, like the Western version, not the Japanese one. Same enemy layout, same difficulty. Like even like the timer, I think is is very similar. Uh, Pretzel, this is the Atari Lynx. Oh, why did I sit on that? I was... I was looking at chat. <laughs> it's my it's my fault. I shouldn't have been looking at chat like that. Not on this level. And uh, I lost my big sword, too. Oh, no, there it is. It's back.
Yeah, well, the music's definitely not on point. <laughs> that I cannot agree with. <laughs> it's, it's pretty garbage here. Honestly, this is one of the tracks that has sounded, uh... Oh, wow, these don't disappear. Oh, see, that is a, that is a big difference. That makes this level a lot easier. So these platforms disintegrate in the NES one. Wow, that makes it a lot easier. That's like the first major gameplay change I've noticed. screen. Just like in the NES one, no health pickups here. Yep, one ninpo, and that's it. Keep forgetting you can just pause that. We got it. Whew. Good. We're gonna end up dying on this one. Phil is hurt worse than TurboGrafx-16. Yeah, I mean, as much as I don't really care for the Ninja Gaiden TurboGrafx soundtrack, it's at least, you know, music. This is just like, what the hell. sucked. I don't think I got an extra life from points earlier. I think what I was hearing it was is this weapon I'm using. It just randomly makes like these chime sounds. Like these jingle sounds. Oops, that ate my input. Unless I get lucky, we're probably not going to get past this second form right away, because I've just taken way too many hits. And there are no health refills here. Uh, especially now, jeez.
Yeah, I bet you, like, one hit's gonna kill me, so... It's probably not gonna be good. Alright, let's see. Didn't even get hit by that, but I got hit by it. <laughs> that was Garbo. Hot garbage. Screwing around to Austin. Dude, we've been streaming for almost three hours already. That's crazy. Doesn't feel like it. I think what we will do is we'll probably we'll take a, a break after this. I'm gonna I gotta feed my cats and uh, maybe get some food in my stomach while I'm at it, and then uh, we'll continue after that. Why did I do that? I'm just taking this way too fast. There's really no excuse now because those platforms don't disappear. There's really no excuse. I latched onto the wall, did not want to do that. Ugh. That messed me up. Uh, I mean, not really, Gudrun. It's because I'm just being fucking lazy, dude. <laughs> it's not rocket science. Okay, thankfully we got it. Oh, thanks for that Uber, I was about to do it. But I wanted to fight the boss first. Uh, Alright, last, 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 last boss. You should probably watch this just to make sure it's not totally different, and it looks like it's not different, it's the same thing. Ooh, it gets, uh, it gets slow. <laughs> uh, that was my fault. There was also a slowdown on it, I noticed, which was interesting. We're gonna get it this time. I just know it. It's not rocket science. Although with how some how with how hard some of these games are, I'm starting to wonder if video games are actually harder than rocket science. It's not that hard, just take your time. Don't look at chat. That's the key thing right there, don't look at chat. It's hard to play Ninja Gaiden 3 in chat at the same time. Or at least read chat at the same time. I can talk and play, but reading and playing the game at the same time... Totally different skill set that I'm just not good at. Wow! The collision detection on that sucks! You 
could probably just explain that away by, like, Ryu just being scared to even look at the spikes, and then he takes damage. <laughs> he just looks at them and is like... Oh, you gotta be kidding me, man! Come on! We're going back in the fight with the same amount of health. <sighs> Whatever. Whatever, man. I did it again! Just about. Yeah, basically the same thing. Just not big lasers, it's like these little tiny little bomb things. Whoa there! It's getting a little more violent. So slow. Woo! Yeah, every time I attacked, it's like I lost all control, because it's like the whole game would lock up for a frame. Or two. Well, we did it. Oh, wow! I- Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It lets you skip through the ending? No! <laughs> wow! It actually lets you skip through the ending. <laughs> that was anticlimactic. <laughs> what the hell, dude? Ugh. Society says I have to beat it again. <laughs> yeah, none of the NES games let you skip through the ending. It's, yeah, they remove all con all controls. Oh, that's awful. I mean, it's not like we were really missing much anyway. We didn't really watch any of the story, and... We would have just been subjected to more awful music. That is just, uh, that's terrible. <sighs> but there you go, guys. That was Ninja Gaiden 3 on the links. Uh, what I'm gonna do is definitely take a break. However, first I'm gonna switch over to something with less grating music in the background. And then, um... I'm gonna go feed my cats, I'm gonna go use the bathroom, maybe, uh... Eat the salad that's in my fridge that I got earlier, because I am hungry again. Um... Let's do... I, I was gonna do the Turbo Graphics Ninja Gaiden, but let's actually go for, uh, the Game Boy one. Because it at least has some good music to start off with. Uh... uh let's see... This may be up there with rocket science when you think of all the entire world you have memorized and stored in memory, and that, that really stuck with you. Yeah, that's actually an interesting thing to think about, Uber, for sure. Yeah, so we're going to actually play Ninja Gaiden Shadow, which was originally a Shadow of the Ninja game. But it actually, you know, it feels a little more like Ninja Gaiden than you would think. But it still wasn't technically originally a Ninja Gaiden game, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> Movie Metalheads, it's, it's like the more pessimistic Austin is, the better chance he has of beating the game. <laughs> uh, you may be right. Maybe my saltiness, uh, maybe there's something to it. You guys are going to hear this theme a lot. Yeah, I'm going to go do that stuff real quick. We've been at this for three hours now, so let me go get some things done. And uh, we'll come back and play some Ninja Gaiden Shadow. See you, see you in a bit.
All right, I am back. <clears throat> yeah, sorry that took so long. Having two cats is very time consuming. Especially when it's feeding time, and I have to also feed myself. I was uh, also eating a salad, which takes me longer to eat. Like, I went to Subway earlier, and I was like, I'm gonna get some food for the stream, but I'm also gonna eat breakfast right now, because I had just woken up. So I got a sub, but I also got a salad. I chose to eat the salad for for dinner. Probably should have saved the sub for the stream, but whatever. Uber says shorter than my breaks. <laughs> All right, let's try Ninja Gaiden Shadow. I know we played this on a Game Boy Variety stream probably last year, but that's the last time I played this. And hey, Andy, welcome back. I do have a full Let's Play on this from years back, if anybody wants to see that. But that was like the last time I've actually completed the game. Yeah, it looks like I think you have multi like five Ninpo slots. And I think it's okay. It's up and attack to use it. All right. <clears throat> You've got this hook too, which is kind of interesting. Yes, Andy, I got a second cat about two weeks ago. Yeah, I don't remember this guy at all. <laughs> doesn't even work on it. What a waste. And the hook doesn't seem to work here. How many hits does he take? Okay, we got him. Patchouli does have a friend now. Well, I don't know if they're friends just yet, but they do chase each other. So... <laughs> hey, Don. Yeah, indeed, that's, um... That was the intent. I don't know the full story behind it, but he eventually turned into a Ninja Gaiden game. It's an interesting hybrid of the uh, the two styles of gameplay. Just rushing in, which is bad. Got some health back, it's good. Uh oh. Alright, 
I guess I have to duck under that. Yeah, also guys, I don't... I've never actually messed around with changing the color palette on the Mister <clears throat> for the Game Boy. So we're kind of stuck with these, uh, this gaudy green. Extra life, I'll take that. Uh, yeah, Andy, I mean, this is the only one. This is the only Game Boy Ninja Gaiden, as far as I'm aware. Hey, it's a solid game. I do recommend trying it. Anyone that likes Game Boy games. Yeah, the music in this game is quite solid. I guess we're close to the boss fight. Okay. <clears throat> Little midget. It's like a take on the Frankenstein and Igor boss from Castlevania. Oh, I like how you can attack on that. Oh, uh, you cannot do that in Ninja Gaiden 3. Nice, first try. Yeah, it's one of the downsides to tipping before you actually get your pizza society. Is if the guy's a complete idiot, then it's like, you feel like you just wait, like threw your money away. Yeah, I like how they shoehorned in some classic Gaiden music. It's the stage 4 theme from the first game. Set up. <laughs> Scott's his four two theme, best theme. <laughs> 
You know what's funny? Like, my reverse controls are on Lynx. I'm still trying to play that way. So it's screwing me up. Yeah, the pizza guys society always get lost trying to find my apartment. It's so frustrating. And my apartment is right next to them too. So it's like, I know they deliver here a lot. So for them to like consistently get it wrong is just aggravating. And what actually kind of worries me too is that like, um, you know, some of these guys still pretend like there's like they're doing no contact delivery. Even if you say like I want somebody to knock at my door, they still drop off your food and just walk off, assuming they're at the right place. But because they didn't knock and actually like give it to somebody, they could very well like deliver it to the wrong place and just like leave your food there. And you know, that's also uh, an aggravating potential. Probably gonna die here. Oh, wow. Uh, I have not, Andy. I'm still debating on whether I'm gonna actually play that one because I played it last week in my Game Gear stream. I do remember this guy. I might still play the Game Gear one, because it only takes, like, 15 minutes to go through. And we didn't actually finish it last week. We actually died at the last boss. The last level is pretty tough. <clears throat> Getting greedy. Pizza is good, society says. Well, at least that there's that. It's even more frustrating when you have to... You know, you're just... You gotta go through all that just to get your food, and then it tastes like crap. It's like, god damn it. Lose, lose. Took a hit. This is very much like Shatterhand music, which was made by Natsume, who did Shadow of the Ninja. sucks.
a Pearl Jammer. I want to be able to hang on ceilings. Really? <laughs> well, that probably kills me instantly. I didn't even think about that. I thought that was just like a piece of rock, not, uh, not fire. Flying Kabuki? <laughs> Kinda looks like it. You playing Kabuki Quantum Fire now? That wasn't by Natsume. That was Howl. Draft Cade. Sounds like fun. Stage five. We got Ninja Gaiden 3 music. You know what? I just realized I can do this. Okay, that doesn't actually work that well. <laughs> Worth a try. It almost seems like you can turn and these guys are more likely to release their shield. I don't know if that's actually working 100%. Yeah. <clears throat> Your Ninbo is really good in this, but you can't use it very often. And if you release your jump button uh, too early, you'll actually detach from your, your hook. Wow, I thought I could actually just jump over that guy. 
frame rate improves when you die. It's kind of weird. Skipping the enemies that I don't have to kill. And you will be AFK. Away from keyboard. Just wait. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Ugh. Just gotta time it right. I don't remember this in the last level, but it is familiar to me. The whole vertical shaft. Oh, that's not good. No Ninpo. Alright, let's see what this entails. It's been a long time since I've been here. Uh, Pearl Jammer, there is not. This pattern. Uh, okay. I think we got it. Uh, Steve L. Tecmo is around. They merged with Koei. It's Koei Tecmo. Just like Square and Enix are still around, they are Square Enix. The Tecmo is still around. <clears throat> well, there you go, Ninja Gaiden Shadow. I wasn't expecting to beat the game, but that's, that's pretty cool. It's not that difficult.
Yeah, Scott, it's a short game. <laughs> Yeah, whenever we do a variety stream of the Game Boy again on the Mister, we'll I'll try to figure out the palettes so we can have a better palette rather than this like puke green. Not a huge fan of this palette. I mean, simplistic bosses was kind of like the hallmark of the Ninja Gaiden games, Freddy. And honestly, that last boss is uh. You gotta be on point on that last boss, not gonna lie. I kinda got lucky that I beat him on my first try. Hey, DG, thank you for joining up as a channel member. I think you're double dipping. I think you're on Patreon, too. <laughs> now I feel bad. <laughs> Did you get those sweet patchy modes? You were jealous of the special GG. <laughs> I always tell people, um, you know, if they want to support, try to support on YouTube directly. If you, if you, at least if you watch the live streams, because then you you get those emotes. Whereas on Patreon, it's like you don't. And uh, you can also use those emotes in the comment sections too. They expanded it to actual videos, not just live streams. So spam them all over the place. I know Mike out there does a really good job of that. He comments on my videos and uses the patch emotes. So there you go. I don't think there is another Ninja Gaiden game on the Game Boy, so we're gonna switch things up. Great soundtrack. Not gonna lie. Alright, so... I didn't really want to double dip on content, but um, I think we're going to go ahead and do that. I think we're going to uh, see if we can fire up Ninja Gaiden on the Game Gear, which kind of like Ninja Gaiden Shadow shouldn't take very long. This is just for people that didn't see it on my Game Gear stream last week. Uh, they're good right now, Pearl. I'm, uh, I'm just kind of leaving them in the other room so I can stay focused tonight. Milo in particular, he's a little rascal, man. He just gets all over the place. He jumps up on everything. Yeah, he jumps up on everything. And when I went out to my break, he had drugged the cat food from one room to the other and put a hole in it. <laughs> And he did that last night too with another bag. I had to, uh, I had to tape it up. Um, yeah, so it was just, uh, don't want him like running around and like, you know, <laughs> pulling out cables or chewing wires or something like that. Yep, Freddy, Ninja Gaiden made it onto the Game Gear. Yep, yep. Yeah, we played this on my Game Gear stream last week, and it's not bad. But, uh, it's got some, some brutal difficulty later on. The last level is really, really challenging. 
Also, there are basically no iframes, so you can just get juggled by enemies and projectiles. So you gotta be really careful. These first couple of levels are pretty easy. But it gets challenging pretty quickly. Also, using your sub weapons is very different. You have to press down and attack. It's really weird. Should be close to the boss fight, I think. Yeah, see, look at that. I just got hit twice. Got juggled by that enemy. You just turn backwards, the guy raises his club. And then that's his weak point. You don't even need to use your specials. Hey, good deal. Yeah, Ninja Milo. <laughs> exactly, Pearl Jammer. <laughs> yeah, the cutscenes are... nothing interesting. Now, unfortunately, there are no checkpoints in the stages. So, if you die at a boss fight, you gotta do the whole level over again. Fire shield, it's pretty useful. Got an extra life. Also useful. Because I know I will be dying a lot in this. Trying to say my Nimpo, or they call it Force in this one. So have to be careful. I mean, like, these guys are doing a ton of damage. And then you can get juggled. Use the force, Ryu. Imagine getting juggled to death by plants. Or getting juggled to death on plants. It's not a Ninja Gaiden game without birds. Actually, speaking of which, I don't think there were any birds in Ninja Gaiden Shadow. There were flying enemies, but no birds. Ugh. Seriously, man. That's just aggravating.
All right, good, got him. Yeah, fire extinguishers try dropping out the windows, right? <laughs> That's a bad sub weapon to have for here. Well, actually, it's not. Now that I think about it. Sub weapons do a little more damage than your regular weapon. died. Hey, you zanked him? Oh, so the scrolls actually give you your force energy. Okay, I see. This guy's projectiles on the right actually has a rhythm or rhyme to it. That's up, forward, down, forward, up. Yeah, okay. That's easy actually. duck. Okay, yeah, very simple, actually. Cool. Oh, yeah, you watch that, Uber? Yeah. <laughs> Here, I'll have to post it for anybody that hasn't seen it. I posted it on Twitter. It's also on Instagram. Yeah, uh, Milo apparently likes drinking out of the sink. So you guys can check that out later. <laughs> yeah, so this level is quite challenging. It is our last level. And then I wouldn't call the last boss super easy either. I wonder if I can... Oh, I can. Okay, so that's how you're supposed to deal with that. Birds. Music just stops. Let's see if we can get some health back.
Yeah, some, uh, definitely some cheap enemy placement here, that's for sure. Did we end up beating this game last week? <laughs> I played so many games that night, I don't even remember. Oh, you know, I think there might have been a third form and we did not beat that. I think that was the issue. Saboteur says, I think I did beat it. Okay. Yeah, there was this form, and I didn't remember what to do with it, so... Uh... <sighs> Don says, I did not beat it. Who <laughs> versus gameplay and redemption? <laughs> oh, come on, seriously, dude. Why you... Whatever. I'm gonna take as few hits as possible. Are you serious, dude? There's a platform I, I landed on below the lowest platform on the screen. Okay, whatever. <sighs> this last level is just kind of tedious. It's so long, you gotta do the whole thing over again. that I did not take a hit. I almost beat Batman too. Yeah, I, I would have beat Batman, but I gave up on it. Batman has unlimited continues. Uh, this does not. At least I don't think it does. Okay, so you do get a health refill halfway through. That's good to know. Wasn't paying attention to it earlier. I feel like Batman, I would want to save state practice if possible. Because, like, the, you know, the final level I got down pretty well after doing it ten times. Or more, probably. But the last boss was definitely a pain, for sure. Yeah, uh, exactly, Don. The music just stops abruptly. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. It's just laziness, that's all. Just an oversight, I'm guessing. Let's try this again.
Yeah, no, I agree, Don. Um, I'm the exact same way. Another uh, notable one is in OutRun 2006, on some of the ports of it, some of the Turbo OutRun music doesn't loop properly. It cuts out abruptly. And then when it tries to loop, it, like, does it in a janky way, like it starts partway through the music track. It's really weird. It's a weird oversight. Huh. What is that? Can you actually destroy those? No? Oh, that was weird! That was very weird. Dude, I don't even know how the hell you're supposed to do this. I I remember having a consistent strategy for this guy, and um, like when I first learned how to beat this game, but now I have no idea what it is. All right, we'll play till our first game over, and then I'm gonna switch to something else because you know this is this gets tedious having to do this level over and over again. Maybe I'll just run straight through because. You do get a health refill part way through. We'll find out if it's like a full health refill. Hello there. Speed strats. Uh oh. Oh. Well, that backfired on me. No, it's not even a full health bar. God damn it. Well, that was my fault. I feel like this game's getting glitchier the more I play it. Oops, that was my fault. I moved over way too early. <laughs> it sucks. And it's all my fault. It's all my fault. <laughs> hey, Darren. Well, some people wanted to see it, so I figured, yeah, I'll go ahead and show it off. Okay, you just gotta be on your feet and hope for the best. Dodge, dodge like it's a shoot 'em up. Re 
revenge is bittersweet. I guess I threw a wrench in Sarah Gane's master plan. Now that he's gone, things should return to normal, period. Ryu talks really slow in this game. Uh, how am I gonna get down from here? <laughs> I love all those GGs. Thanks, guys. Uh, was there a reason for the mountain to explode? A little confused on that bit of story. <laughs> oh, maybe they just wanted to destroy the base on the inside. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But with everybody dead, what does it matter? No one's going to get through that damn obstacle puzzle at the end anyway. <laughs> Phil says, call an Uber. <laughs> the end. Do we get any credits? No? Wow. Oh, we do. Okay. Uh, Darren, uh, the name of my second cat is Milo. All your base R belong to us. No, all your base R belong to us. Oh, your base, 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 oh, your base, or belong to us. Back when internet memes were good. Good and honestly, a little innocent. <laughs> oh, I wish I had some more caffeine. Should have bought a second thing of Diet Coke. Writer P. Okay. Screenplay. <laughs> They're acting like this is high art or something. <laughs> uh, no, Darren, I definitely don't need a uh, a third cat. I found that uh, having two cats, at least of uh, the temperament that my cats have, is is it's gonna be challenging to live with. Uh, Milo is uh, he's got tons of energy, and the cats like chase each other around, and they tend to do so when I'm trying to sleep, which means I can't get sleep. Yeah, there's gonna be an adjustment period. Hopefully they can get in they can both get into a rhythm with my schedule. it, Bobby? Stop whacking off in my RV. I can't do the Hank Hill voice. 
Hey, Cole, welcome back. Tap, 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 tap. Yeah, it's a clicky keyboard. Oh, man. Uh, this game is super frustrating, but I'm going to go ahead and play it anyway. I'm uh, not a huge fan of it myself, but we'll go ahead and show it off. I think I did it in a Master System stream more recently, actually. You know what's funny is when I do time codes, it's just gonna be Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, over and over and over again. So that'll be kind of funny. Now, I'll probably list, like, uh, the console versions. <laughs> Obviously, I'm gonna have to, otherwise no one's gonna know which Ninja Gaiden I'm actually playing. Idiocracy? I need to watch that. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. So yeah, this is Ninja Gaiden for the Master System. Like the Game Gear one, also made by Sega. Yeah, there's some good things about this game, but, uh... It's, uh, there's some not-so-good things, too, but we'll just try to focus on the good, I guess, until I start getting really angry at it, and then I want to start yelling at it. I was looking at chat. Yeah, so this one uh, was a European release, at least that's the version I'm playing. It was not released in North America, unfortunately. It's a decent Master System game, but I, I feel like it still pales compared to the actual guiding games by Tecmo. By Master System standards, I guess it's not too bad. Master System, unfortunately, did not have the greatest action platformers. <laughs> Most of them were pretty second-rate compared to, like, the best that was on NES. Actually, do more damage with my shuriken. Nope, it does the same amount. Not worth using. I think some other projectiles are definitely better than the shuriken. Alright, there we go. Andy says, Remember, a ninja is a master of himself, he does not get angry. Yeah, so we go from fighting, like, actual ninjas to, like, weird midgets and stuff? I mean, I guess technically there were midgets in the NES game too, but... 
they weren't like super derpy looking with cameras. It's just weird. Hey, at least it's got birds! Oh yeah, that's right, this sh Oh! I totally forgot! Uh, I need to stop using my, uh, my Ninpo. Someone told me, it might have even, even been Galimio, uh, on my last attempted playthrough of this, uh, it was mentioned that... Oh yeah, you can wall jump in this too. Uh, it was mentioned that if you get your Ninpo up to 999, it... It... It becomes like infinite use usage for like the rest of the game. You know what? I'm gonna actually now. I, now I'm thinking about that. Let's reset the game and uh, try it again with that in mind. I totally forgot about that. So basically, I'm just not gonna use any Ninpo. I totally forgot about that. Really just skip a lot of these enemies too. By the way, this shuriken is really good. It actually cuts through like everything it touches. Up to 250 already. Five fifty. All right, boss time. Yeah, I knew that level wasn't going to take us long to go through again. liked about, like, the first Ninja Gaiden is it had all those crazy symbols all over the game. It was, you know, the the big enemies or the big bosses in the game were, like, kind of made out to be, like, devil worshippers and stuff like that. So even though the first Gaiden has some weird enemies as well, they at least look like monsters or, like, really creepy in a way. You don't really have enemies in that game that just look outright derpy. So, like, and with, you know, the fact that you see all this, like, symbolism all over the game, you know, it kind of lines up. This is just like, look at that guy, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> uh, Alright, whatever. Try not to overthink it. Let's see. Can I kick off this wall? I can. Okay. 845. Alright, still trying to save my Nimpo so I can get that infinite usage. Not 
25, because I had to use Ninpo for that. Yeah, this game has respawning enemies as well. Just like the NES games. And at least they're not doing that much damage. Imagine that they were doing like three or four hits at a time. That would be super frustrating. There's some really annoying enemy placement in this. I mean, to be fair, that's like every Ninja Gaiden game, but still, it's like extra annoying in this game. It's like, this is just super overkill. Little hoppy dudes you're guaranteed to get hit by, and then spikes! Nice! Um, I think I just- I have to go to the left. It's not obvious. Nine twenty five min <laughs> Whoops. Nope. All right, so we're at nine hundred ninety nine. Let me try to get another one before I start using my Ninpo. Second level, man. <sighs> it's like I can't do anything. It's so stupid. Alright, okay, we're good. My Nimpo is maxed out. So I can just use sub weapons for the rest of the game and not worry about running out. Dumb. <laughs> Five birds at once. Like, give me a break, man. At least I've got this weapon. It's very powerful. And it goes through walls. <sighs> Derpy man. Derpy man has a camera. Uh, that's not good. Uh, that's not good either. I gotta respawn. Yep. It's such awful level design. It's awful, awful, man.
just by cutting through multiple enemies, this projectile, uh, only does one hit on the boss. Yeah, Don, I mean, some of the music in this game is definitely catchy, for sure. That's probably my favorite aspect of the game. Man, some of the level design, though, really leaves uh, a bad taste in the mouth. Have I played uh, Ninja Gaiden 2 on MS-DOS? Yes, I've played it plenty. <laughs> uh, it is... Hmm. That's an interesting one. <laughs> Freddy goes, can we go back to the Ninja Gaiden Game Boy music? <laughs> right? That's... that was a great soundtrack. Oh, I switched over to the wrong one. Oh, that uses up health. Oof, not good. So I just remembered, if you press both buttons at the same time, it'll actually do like a screen-clearing bomb. But it depletes health. I didn't even realize that. So I went down to the bottom route to see if I can get some health back. Because I kept using my screen clearing bomb by accident. I didn't even realize it would take away my health. And then I looked down and I was like, oh, that's that's not good. Alright, let's not get that. It looks a lot like the one I already have. It's just at a different angle. I do like that this has objects that are on the foreground. That's actually rare for Master System games, believe it or not. Platforms you can fall through. Oh, that's right, you can crawl in this game. <laughs> hey, Leo, welcome back. Oh, uh, yeah, this was a uh, frustrating part. You can actually stop on the ladders. Oh, come on, really? <sighs> uh, no, Leo, it does not do the arcade game, not yet. 
not as of doing this stream. Knowing that you can actually stand on the ladders is very helpful. Boss time, maybe? Yep. It's a Mega Man X3 pattern. <laughs> yeah, so Leo, you missed out on the Atari Lynx playthroughs. And uh, I got annihilated by Ninja Gaiden 1. So we kind of play the arcade game, <laughs> but didn't at the same time. Oh, this knockback. these hits I'm taking, pure skill. <laughs> totally intentional. And this shuriken I've got is actually really solid because it cuts through multiple enemies. You can just shoot it and then uh, just scroll the screen forward. Very useful. God, the collision in this is also not great. I mean, you guys saw me jump, drop down to small platforms like that in the NES games, hit the enemies, like, without taking damage, and it's so hard to do that in this. It's already hard enough as is in the NES games, with good hitboxes. Now you gotta do it in this, but with poor hitboxes. It's very frustrating. So the white one actually gives you health back. I didn't realize that. Okay. This is a long level, too. Yeah. 
Yeah, that damn bird. <laughs> Look at that bird! <laughs> Screw you, bird! The infinite ninpo strategy definitely helps out a lot. It really does. So a lot of these guys are taking two hits now. Oh no, I didn't want to get that. Don't get me wrong, it's useful. It's actually, extremely useful. Hey, Adam? Yes, I'm still at it. Mid-air control really helps on this one. up his pattern. Oh, that actually shields me from the bullets? You gotta be kidding me. No Contra Syndrome here. What do you mean by that, Don? Oh, right on, Adam. Fire Pit sounds nice. Uh, don't, don't do that, Freddy. If you take shots every time the porn bots show up, you'll be dead by the end of, end of the stream. Wife and daughter are, you went inside to pass out, wimps. <laughs> Might as well just use this for the rest of the stage. Or not. Oh, that's right, you don't lose your sub-weapons when you die in this. Wow, that makes me invincible through spikes too? It's like Ninja Gaiden 3. Good. Any plans for Memorial Day? Uh, no, I've got none, really. This makes some of these levels tolerable. I know I'm being really hard in this game, but still. <laughs> uh, waiting till you hear you hear my choice words for the PC Engine game. Is Uber still there? <laughs> I can just run through all these spikes. I mean, this is what the the fire shield is like in the in Ninja Gaiden Three. I 
these levels are so long, too. Like, even when you're running through them like this, they're still long. Oh, that's right, I think you really want a projectile for this dude. Good. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me! It made me lose control when I killed him, and it put me in the pit. I had no control over that. I hate it when games do that. The damn monkeys and Medusa heads are. Oh, they're not tough to deal with, man. You just gotta you gotta learn how to deal with them. Once you figure out how to deal with them, you'll be like, oh, that's that's easy. Oh, this is a lot longer than the Game Boy one, uh, Freddy. Definitely. See if we can actually get past this level. I think this is where we got stuck last time I, I played this game. Yeah, this gets pretty ridiculous, actually. Yep, makes me invincible against that. Jeez. Ah. Uh, I mean, let's continue. Whoops. This is still a good weapon, but it's not what I want. Man, there's only like a few frames. So the part where the birds drop the monkeys, all you want to do is just literally I made the same mistake again. You literally just want to stand and whip. Do not jump. Just move back and forth, stand and whip. Uh, if you have any problems with it, I've got multiple playthroughs of it on my channel. Uh, check out my most recent Let's Play from October. Oh, that's not good.
<laughs> it's so fast, man. Come on. It's just unnaturally fast. Cafe Man, yes, this is Master System. Yeah, some of these enemies are just way too tanky for, like, you know, where they are, uh, where they're placed and located. It's way too tanky. You know, situations like this, one hit, tops. You don't make those enemies tanky when it's like one hit and you're just knocked off the ledge. It's called BS and terrible design. Ugh, I just hate it when like... Ugh. Games like this end up like the way they do because like, there's a lot of good stuff here, but there's some really awful design decisions as well. The thing is, it's like they had tons of other games to work off of and take inspiration from. You know, this is 1992. This is not like 1986, like Castlevania, you know? Like, it's just, that's what's disappointing about it. Alright, cool. I got my, my shield again. I think I have to fall down. And that's one reason why, I like, the NES and Guiding games get away with spamming you with so many enemies, because they die so fast. And you've got, like, the tools to deal with them, without necessarily having to cheese. If I remember correctly, this guy basically, like, makes half the platforms disappear? Yeah, like, come on. Come on. I gotta do the whole level over again. What? <laughs> Thanks, Adam. I'm glad you enjoy the videos. That, that makes me feel great. I love hearing you guys say that, you know? Because I can get salty. Like, these last couple streams I've been kind of salty. But, you know, on my regular videos, I try to, you know... You know try to be calm and relaxed, like you said. Try. Yeah, like I was complaining about with this, it's just what, what frustrates me is that there were so many other action platformers that came before this that this could have learned from, and instead it's just like, Durr, we're just gonna go against the grain, and ended up being a worse game for it, which is a shame. I don't know if it always goes to the right? And then left. Whoa, I guess so. Slightly tedious. Oh, it seems to be kind of dependent on how far he is away from you. Interesting. Yeah. Or how close he is to the other side, I mean. Yeah, society, it seems bad at first, but it's literally just this over and over, so...
play it safe. All right, we got it. Adam still remembers my MK3 Let's Play from forever ago. Oh yeah, where I, I basically give up on Motaro. Yeah, that was fun. Chapter 7, Overcome. Okay. Overcome what? Overcome poorly designed games? I've been having to do that all night. What?! What was that? I can jump. Yeah, I can jump on that. Why did it not work? It's so odd. Interesting. Some very Kabuki Quantum Fighter style mechanics here. That was close. Even Kabuki Quantum Fighter was kind of like a second rate, uh, Ninja Gaiden, Batman, whatever, clone. It's still a lot better than this. I do like how detailed some of these backgrounds are, at least. You know, it definitely is a good looking game by Master System standards. Ow. Run through all the spikes. <laughs> Man, and I have no shame about it. <laughs> no shame at all. Sloppy. Are you serious, dude? <sighs> ah. Almost made the same mistake twice. Levels are so damn long, too. It's like, man, why?
There's another level! Wow! <laughs> I think this game just keeps going on. It doesn't want to end. Uh, someone's life is at stake. I don't really care. Fire against fire, baby. At least I'm thrown right into a boss fight. What do I play off stream to relax? Uh, not a whole lot, honestly. I'm usually streaming if I'm playing games. Uh, I'm still kind of working slowly at a game of Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, specifically on the Switch. But, you know, I don't do that too often. I, I did it a little bit last week. Okay. Let's see, now I kind of wish I had a projectile, but... Alright, this is annoying, to say the least. Looks like you just want to wait for him to do his thing. Yeah, if you get close, then he dives at you. Or dashes towards you. Does it feel strange when I play a game solo at this point? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been streaming for so long now that it's just become normality. Wow, you just start right back in this form? Jeez. Yeah, well that's a part of it, Adam, is is I'm basically like, well, if I play video games by myself, I feel like I'm kind of wasting time. I could be doing something more with my life. I mean, this is in regards to Twitch streaming in particular, because Twitch, I don't, I don't treat Twitch like it's some kind of show or anything like that. It's literally just me streaming and... You know, there's YouTube, I try to have a, a format, I try to be focused, I try to have a subject, like tonight it's all Ninja Gaiden games. And with YouTube, I also think about people potentially watching down the road, because, you know, people do find the archives down the road, whereas on Twitch, they, they don't. So... Got it. Is there another form? Let's see. That was actually kind of tough with just my fire shield. If I had some uh, other projectiles, it would have been different. Okay, I can't skip through this, so I think we beat the game. I don't even remember that final boss. I'm starting to wonder if I've ever actually finished this before. I thought I did on a previous Master System stream, but maybe not. 
Cafe Man says, I picture Austin playing a Doom game off stream to relax. I actually do do that occasionally. I will fire up some, uh, like a Doom Wad or something and play just for a little bit. It just all depends. The, one of the problems is that, like, I'm, I'm so backlogged with, like, YouTube stuff that I'm always, like, doing something working towards, you know, content for my YouTube channel. Yeah, Society, there are some modern games I want to try to get into, but it's just the time is so limited. Like I mentioned earlier, I want to try to play through Bayonetta. I want to try out Vanquish. Uh, I want to do Sekiro. I want to do... Uh, uh, I'd like to do the uh, Neo games. I have those on Steam. Uh, I'd like to try to play through Gears of War again. I'd like to get back into that series and see what the the later ones are like. I still need to play through Halo Infinite. All right, all right Ninja Gaiden on Master System. Ugh, what a trip. Alright. So this one's for Uber if he's still here. And it looks like he is. Uber's gonna be like cringing the entire way as he watches me play through this game. This is the, for the best console ever. I mean, I'm not gonna argue there. I, I do love me some Turbo Graphics and PC Engine. It's a fantastic console. right into it. I am terrible at this version. You have to play it totally differently from the NES one. But it's basically a port of the, you know, original NES game. Honestly, compared to the Master System one, this one is, like, really, really good. <laughs> and I don't even like it that much. I'd rather play this. I know I'm probably ruining some kid's childhood, or some adult's childhood right now. <laughs> yeah, that choppy scrolling, though, never been a fan of that. You actually get hit by his, uh, his knife now. Uber, it's simply because this game has hypnotized you. You're just in a... a you're like in a trance state with this game. You just... You cannot... <laughs> you cannot come out of that trance. And I feel bad for you. But as long as you're happy, Uber... That's what matters most. 
Honestly, maybe it's for the better, because some of the music in Ninja Gaiden is kind of, like, sad. Maybe that's why I'm depressed all the time, because I played too much Ninja Gaiden 1. Thanks, Ninja Gaiden 1! You made me want to slit my wrists. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, DG says, I'm ignorant on the TG-16. That's the same as the PC Engine, right? Yes. Yeah, PC Engine. It's like Nintendo Entertainment System is the Famicom in Japan. Turbo Graphics is the PC Engine in Japan. The <laughs> Uber says, yeah, these jams get me pumped. I've got to remember, I don't have infinite Ninpo now. So I can't quite cheese my way through the game. They ruined the Mike Tyson enemy sprites in this. <laughs> oh yeah, this doesn't... Ugh, the fire shield isn't guaranteed to work in this. It's... It's actually a risky proposition. I really do like how colorful this is, though. It's interesting. Like, I don't even think the Spin Slash is... well... <sighs> I mean, for a boss fight, I'd rather have the Throwing Star. The Spin Slash does not kill bosses in one hit in this one. Gotta say, Uber, the uh, Master System one really put this one into perspective. You're probably glad I'm saying that right now. Nice. What is the best NES SNES soundtrack? I don't know, man. There's way too many to name. Way too much game music. Way too much good game music. Yeah, I, I'm there with you, Uber. I like the Master System's look, but its feel is, is... You get used to the feel, but it's just like the level design is... Ugh. It's like a fifth grader designed it. Oops! That's because I can jump so high in this one. I just ran right into those bullets. I do think they should have gotten rid of the uh, the background scrolling here, though. I did it again. Nice, it worked. Uh-oh. It does not have the spin slash glitch, no. I don't even really consider that a glitch. We've, we've known about it ever since the game came out. It just is. Yeah, the Turbo, unfortunately, had, you know, kind of struggled with scrolling. Uh, you know, multiple layers of scrolling. It could do it! You know, you look at, like, New Adventure Island, it did it just fine. But, uh... Yeah, some games like this just did not... You know, they weren't able to get it. Which is a shame. This would look so much nicer with smooth scrolling. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Well, that's... garbage. That's way worse than the NES one. Yeah, Uber, I, I, I'm gonna side with Carl on this one. The background scrolling is garbage. I mean, it's, it's hard in the eyes. When something hurts your eyes, like, that's not good. <laughs> 
It's just not good, period. And this isn't the only game to do that. Like, East 3 is another one, which for a long time made me not like uh, the turbo version of East 3. But when I finally got over it, it's actually my favorite console one now. Mainly because it just plays better than, you know, the other console versions available. But it is, it is jerky and hard on the eyes. Oi. Intended strat, maybe? Oh, I can- I still notice it, Uber, even when I'm playing. <laughs> hey, JD, welcome back. It is nice that your sub-weapon carries over from level to level. Really? Are you- you're not gonna disappear. Well, that's good to know. Power-ups time out on the NES one. I have to take this so much slower. Yeah, I despawned him. Nice. Did you know that, Uber? Did you know that, Uber? You can despawn him. <laughs> uh, Tom, this is the PC Engine, or TurboGrafx-16. I have to play this game totally differently. Totally differently. Damn it, you're supposed to despawn. <laughs> oh, you kill him with the fire wheel. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, you can't jump? Wow, that's weird. Oh, you played Rondo of Blood on the Turbo Graphics. Okay, yeah. Same, same hardware. Although Rondo runs on uh, beefed up hardware, it runs on the CD format, but it also requires uh, extra RAM. And then the hardware that it was made for, I think, might even have uh, some extra uh, capabilities like. Uh, Well, no, I think maybe the Turbo Graphics already had that built in. I was thinking sound sampling. The funny thing, Uber, is that it's not even scrolling the background. It's still almost static. It's just like a jittery static. It doesn't make any sense, like, why they implemented it the way they did. Is there still an extra life here? Yep. The extra life sound is not nearly as satisfying in this. Wow, you're not supposed to be there. Oh, interesting.
Oh yeah, hot j- It's gonna say hot jams. No! No, 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 no. Oops. <laughs> Are you serious? Are you serious? Oh yeah, Uber, I heard uh, fireworks outside earlier. I was like, it's not 4th of July! <laughs> Come on, Rick, let us pass. Splatterhouse is in a different universe. Of course, I got no Nimpo because I died a bunch. <laughs> this music. <laughs> I think I'm going crazy. Why does this music even exist? It sounds like freaking dark circus music. Ooh, Legendary Axe 2. Yeah, I like that one, Society. Yeah, JD, the dogs do have a shared health pool. That was- I noticed that too. That was interesting. Yeah, the game definitely looks better when it just foregoes scrolling backgrounds and it just has, like, you know, animated backgrounds. That works better.
I like that there's an actual gate. It's, it's neat. do this part. Oh, I can do it. I probably watched Uber do that once or twice. Whew. Man. I have two lives left. Definitely want that. Really? I kind of did not want that, but well, whatever. Oh, that part's a lot easier now. Jeez. extra life there. Ooh, nice. Lucky pickup. They got rid of the one up. Really weird. Okay, seriously, dude. I wonder if they refill my health at Moth. That's what I'm talking about. Like, there was a tiny platform like that in the Master System one. And you have to jump next to it to hit the enemy, but nope. Hitboxes suck. You jump over, you get hit, and you get bounced off. They don't refill your health! God. Yeah, I agree, Don. The elevator music is not cutting it. I think that put me all the way back. We didn't even push him over. Is there like a glitch or something? Okay, I could just skip that section completely. Oh, it doesn't work on that one. What a tease. For some reason I thought there was a health refill, I was thinking of another screen. 
great. Not really? Come on! This game has some BS design choices too. It's still annoying how they don't refill your health because, like, if you get there with, like, if I got here with as much health as I have right now, it's guaranteed death. You might as well just like kill yourself and start over. Speaking of which, Last level, ladies and gentlemen. Probably just gentlemen. Oops, did not want to get that. Alright, cool. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to get past that without a projectile. Well, damage boosted off the dog. Interesting. Yay! <sighs> you can tell I'm having a lot of fun playing this game. 
It's a great time! Hey, Scruff, you got a CRT and you're diving back into NES. Hell yeah. That's cool to hear. I've never stopped playing NES, but I did uh, start buying cartridges again for it about a year ago. Built up a nice sized collection. I figured you could actually climb on that. Oh, there's no stopwatch here. Why? Why did you change it? Should have used the throwing star. Yeah, I should have used the throwing star. That would have been better. Yeah, Uber, you can definitely get used to some input lag, for sure. Not a lot, but, you know, a few frames isn't the end of the world. That's good to know.
Yeah, in some ways this is a lot worse than the NES one. It seems to be hard to reliably bait those fireballs. You don't even have to, uh, hit the core. Yay! Screw this! I... Well, I wouldn't call Ashton Ash's nice animated cutscenes. <laughs> they were pretty janky. Uh, I mean, using Ashton Axe as the bar, uh, Vice Project Fudge! Vice Project Doom. Uh, I know there are others, but I'm just kind of drawing blanks right now. Oh, that's right. I can't actually do this. Because I have no projectiles. But at least I can do that. How nice of you, game developers. How nice indeed. Can make that jump. Yep. Oh, that's interesting. It actually lets you keep your previous weapon.
Are you serious? I still got hit by the bird? No, no, I love Ashian Axe, I just think the cutscenes suck. You specifically asked about good cutscenes, and I don't think its cutscenes are good at all. They're like, really... There's like three different frames for the entire game. It's Astian Axe's head, bad guy's head, some other bad guy's head. Oh, maybe four. Then the fairy. That's like, that's the in entirety of his cutscenes. <laughs> I know I'm being a little facetious there, but it's, it's kind of lazy. Astian Axe, the game itself, I like a lot. I mean, I covered it on one of my more recent, like, variety streams, and a lot of people were like, Whoa, this game actually looks really cool! I was like, damn straight, it is a cool game. But yeah, the cutscenes are... Bleh. Like, they might as not have even been there, you know? You're not gonna do something right. Don't do it at all. That's how I look at things. Ow. Slightly pissed, society. I have been playing lots of Ninja Gaiden games I don't particularly care for tonight. So I feel like I've earned the right to be pissed. Screw this game. I don't know why people like it. I really don't. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. Hey, Vince. How are you doing? Uh, I think we're about done, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kabuki Quantum Fighter has some cutscenes. That's another one with terrible cutscenes. Skip them at all costs. Actually, Kabuki Quantum Fighters is way worse than Astian Axe. It's like, it's the same screen over and over and over again. Uh, and yeah, Vince, there is a Ninja Gaiden on Turbo Graphics. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we're gonna try to change games. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. So don't mind me as I switch cores here. There's not really much else to try unless I do Ninja Gaiden Trilogy, and I'm not doing Ninja Gaiden Trilogy. It's like I've done enough Ninja Gaiden tonight. Uh, but let's see. Scruff asks, are the modern Ninja Gaidens on the 360 better than the NES games? I mean, that's a matter of taste, dude. I mean, I'm gonna go with the NES ones, because I like 2D games more, but, I mean, some people like 3D games more. Uh, that's gonna be really up to you. Alright, let's see... Alright, I don't know how complete this game is. I've only played it a couple times via emulation back in the day. But this is the Mega Drive version that was never released. Uh, maybe JD. I try to report them. At least it's got some kicking music. I like that PC Engine game.
Uh, Steve, I don't think I have a way of running the PC one right now. I don't think I, uh, I even have it loaded up on my Mr. Core. Or 486 Core. Yeah, we've been streaming for almost six hours. I'm kind of done, too. I kind of want to get out of here. But we'll finish off with this. Yeah, really good title screen theme. It's worth it for at least that. Jeez. Easy, normal. No more! No more! <laughs> they didn't even spell normal right. That's great. Attack, jump, special. Yeah, this game was... This is a prototype. It was never actually released. It never came out. It was dumped a long time ago. Like, back in the 90s. <laughs> Talk to... To Brute at the boxing gym. He knows most everything that goes on around here. <laughs> oh man. They don't even finish the text, do they just fade out? This seems like it's loosely based on the arcade game. You still have like the uh, hockey mask guys. Uh, Don, I remember people not liking this at all. Yeah, like, you kinda... It's a little janky. I don't even know how much game is here. Yeah, and it's really weird because you, uh... You always go up at it like, a diagonal. And you move in diagonals. It's super awkward. Yeah, so for those of you guys that use emulation or flashcards or something like the Mister, you can play the Genesis prototype of Ninja Gaiden. Or you could be one of those dummies that buy reproductions, but, you know, whatever. It's your money. <laughs> Yeah, Vince, it's unreleased. It's un it was unfinished, so I bet you they would have polished it up for a final release. Yeah, you can see it, it definitely takes place after the uh, the arcade game a little bit. That special also took away health. Oh, does the jump kick even work? Wow, I don't even know if the jump kick works. Might not have been programmed in yet. <laughs> and that special takes away health. It's a level from Arcade Ninja Gaiden. Holy crap. See, Vince, I've never been past the first level either. <laughs> oh great, your health doesn't carry over either. I'm gonna guess there's no throw mechanic. There is. Huh. Check that out, you can throw like in the arcade game.
Very interesting. This is like a hybrid of sorts. Yeah, this is really interesting. Like, I've never been this far, so I had no idea it actually had arcade levels. Yeah, with some refinement, this could have been pretty, pretty decent. I mean, by, like, early Genesis beat-em-up standards. All right, thanks, society. Yeah, have a good night, sir. Yeah, and this is brand new. Yeah, I'm dead. I do wonder how much of the game is actually here. Can't seem to jump up there. Yeah, this is super janky. Hmm, random trash can. This must be like an official park or something. Ninja DuckTales! Alright, see ya Andy. Oh, I can't get up there. Uh, what? Okay. <laughs> yeah, the game definitely needs some refinement. Look at this. This is even programmed correctly. Yeah. <laughs> Sumo guy. Whoa! No! Oh! So if you pause it, if you hit A, it restarts the level. If you hit C, it goes to the next level. Yeah. Because it's a prototype, you know? So, so testers can skip around and test later things.
Oh, he just disappeared. Oh yeah, it's getting really glitchy now. The farther we get into it, it seems like the more glitchy it becomes. <laughs> Finn says, you did it! Nice job! Thanks, Vince! What? He... That's funny. He disappeared and turned into one of the, uh... Hockey mask guys. Yeah, this is getting super glitchy. I do wonder if I can latch on to, like, poles. Doesn't seem like it. It is kind of a shame this wasn't finished. You know, with some tweaking, this could have been pretty solid. Yeah, we can just skip to the next round. Uh, I'm sinking! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is... I mean, you can't... You can't knock a prototype too much. And hey, it's bosses from the arcade game. We're all sinking. All right, I win for free. <laughs> Quicksand ceiling. I think it glitched out. It doesn't know what to do. Oh. Uh, oh yeah, it's totally glitched out now. It just it just soft locked on me. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Floor is quicksand, right? Well, I think that's gonna do it for me, guys. We'll just kind of jam out to this awesome title screen music for a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. It's kind of late. I need to go get some food. I'm pretty hungry. I've had breakfast and lunch. Now I need dinner. Yeah, indeed, it was an interesting journey, Vince. Thanks for the GG, JD. Yeah, if you're gonna glitch out, you might as well glitch out good. <laughs> oh, man. Woo. Yeah, it's a, actually, you know, now that I played a few levels of that, it's kind of a damn shame if it wasn't tweaked, polished up, and released. Although, then again, 1992, I mean, that was Streets of Rage 2. Yeah, Sega probably was like, yeah, we have a masterpiece on our hands. Why release this piece of garbage? Yeah, Streets of Rage 2, December 20th, 1992. So maybe that's why they canceled it. Like, Streets of Rage 2 is just uh, so much better. Yeah, I really like the music too, JD, especially the title theme. Yeah, thanks for the GG's, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed the stream. Got a little salty there. Was definitely tired at points, but... Yeah, it's still fun, I think, overall. Interesting stream concept, bouncing from console to console. Oh, man. Well, yeah, that's gonna do it for me. Um... Trying to actually, I wonder if anybody's streaming on YouTube right now. Probably not. Anyone I know that's streaming? I don't think anyone I know is streaming. Yeah.
Hey, DG, thank you very much for that fiver. Alright guys, well, have yourselves a fantastic day or night, wherever you are in the world, and I guess until the next one, take it easy. Uh, I'll have the archive out tomorrow, hopefully, and I'll have it time-coded, so skip around if you want to catch up. And I'll see you guys later.